with only eight minutes to play. The Cats staged a furious rally and pulled within two in the final minute before Tennessee was finally able to shut the door. Today, the Cats return home to play the final game in Rupp Arena this season against the Auburn Tigers. Kentucky fans will bid farewell to the Cats' only senior, Derek Miller. It's Kentucky against Auburn coming up next. University of Kentucky Wildcat Basketball, sponsored in part by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By Ford and your Kentucky Ford dealer, where you'll like the Ford deal you drive home. By Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, all around coverage, all around Kentucky. By the 18 rural electric cooperatives of the East Kentucky Power System. By Great Financial Federal, your key to financial security. And by Ashland Oil, we believe in the value of teachers because teachers change lives. Ford, Childers Quick Mart, by Johnson Industries, Commonwealth Equipment, First Commonwealth Bank, by Wayne Supply, the First National Bank of Jackson, by Carphone, and by Southeast Marine. Like this one on this particular day in college basketball. It is the day the Kentucky fans have a last chance to honor their senior players, or in this case, a player. It is the last home game of the year. From Rupp Arena, downtown Lexington, it is Kentucky against Auburn. Hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Acker, along with Dick Gabriel. Jim Master is away today on the Southeastern Conference basketball assignment. This is the day the Kentucky fans will have an opportunity to honor the lone senior on the Kentucky squad. That is Derek Miller. There are many, many items that stand out in a player's mind, Dick. The big defensive play, the big offensive play, the tournament victory. But for Derek, this will probably stand up higher than any moment in his life. Well, it's because the fans have been so great at Rupp Arena, Ralph. They were supposed to be the black cloud this year, washed away in a rain of three-pointers, and the crowd is the reason why. A crowd indeed will be there. And they'll also have an opportunity to honor the scrappiest basketball team ever to play. And now let's join the public address announcer to honor Derek Miller. This year, he's Kentucky's leading scorer, averaging 20 points per game, which is fifth best in the Southeastern Conference. He's 29th and still rising on the all-time Kentucky scoring list. He's one of the top three-point shooters in America. He wears number four. He's number one in our hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, from Savannah, Georgia, Derek Miller. Frank and Bernice Hawkins, along with UK Equipment Manager Bill Kitely and Basketball Administrative Assistant Marta McMacken. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and join Mr. Othello Pumphrey in the singing of My Old Kentucky Home. Roll on 
$100,000 in escort rebates in this area alone. That makes this the biggest Ford Escort sellout ever. We've got over 1,500 new escorts in stock and all come with a $1,000 rebate or 6.9 financing plus a 750 rebate. Get a four-door with a $1,000 rebate or 6.9 plus a 750 rebate. Same goes for a wagon, even an Escort GT. Choose the $1,000 rebate and get an Escort Pony for just $67.57. But it all ends soon, where quality is standard. Your Ford dealer. Hi, Dan Issel for Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. You know, safety precautions in the home can mean the difference between life and death for your family. Having smoke detectors, fire extinguishers, holding exit drills so everyone knows escape routes in case of fire are just a few. Stop by the Farm Bureau Insurance office in your county and pick up some home protection and safety brochures today. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. All around coverage, all around Kentucky. For a bear of a thirst, I reach for it first. I can drink a lot more. And it settles the score. Four fingers, number seven, the taste of pure heaven. It's the drink of the moon. It's playing out to it. It moves Louie's lips. It shakes Eric's hips. Go look out, Pepsi, the move is on. Now we're singing the Diet Coke song. Diet Coke has real cola taste in just one calorie. So for Bengal fans, it's Boomer's baby. Diet Coke. It's the best way to change your oil. Welcome. It's fast. It's complete. And it's guaranteed. Valvoline Instant Oil Change. People who know what they're doing. Rupp Arena. For the Wildcats will meet the Tigers of Auburn in Southeastern Conference basketball this afternoon. Kentucky has a string of 25 wins in a row going when they honor the seniors. This is the way the experts said that they would finish this year. And you'll see on the right the way things stand. The preseason polls at LSU would be number one. They are. But Georgia was picked to be fifth. They're tied for number one at the moment. Alabama's exactly where people thought they would be. Tennessee is up a little higher than everybody thought they would be. But the big story has to be Kentucky and Auburn, Dick Gabriel. No question, Ralph. And I'm one of the people who had Auburn 10th. i got to admit I had Kentucky 8th. But no question, Auburn and Kentucky, the biggest surprises, pleasant surprises in the SEC this year. And you've got two coaches here who are yeah. vying, not in their own minds, for Coach of the Year honors, Tommy Joe Eagles and Rick Pitino. And there's a good fight that can be put up for either one of them. And what a battle we're going to have here today between Kentucky and Auburn. Outstanding players on both ball clubs. And Kentucky is uh, being headed, of course, by Derek Miller. But Derek Dennison is the guy who runs everything for Auburn. Well, he really hurt Kentucky down at Auburn, Ralph, uh, on the offensive end. 27 points for Derek Dennison. 
Tennyson. He had a tremendous performance at Vanderbilt, so you know he can play in front of a hostile crowd. Derek Miller with 21 down there against Auburn, and you know he'd love to go out with a big night tonight. And this and this ball club that Auburn brings in here has won two ball games on the road in the Southeastern Conference. They have done it the hard way. They've come from behind both times. I thought the game was over at halftime down at Vanderbilt, but it was not to be. As they no. scored from behind to win. And that was a trouble. Kentucky thought the game was over, too, and the Kentucky coaches have impressed upon their players this week, play 40 minutes. Don't let up, even with a big lead. He says, Rick Pitino says, it's hard to protect the lead, especially on the road. Kentucky found that out the hard way. They did indeed. And of course, Kentucky is coming off of a loss out of Knoxville, Tennessee, just the other night. But what a fight the Wildcats put up, Dick. They were down by 21 points, had a chance to give up, but they wouldn't. They stormed back and have a chance to win the thing inside the last 30 seconds and lose it 102 to 100. In my mind, that was almost a victory for Kentucky. Absolutely. And that says so much about the crowds and the spirit this year. Nobody talked about the loss. All they talked about was the comeback. Any other year, they'd say, we lost to Tennessee. Well, they did not. They did not. They, indeed, the fans were behind them all the way, and they re remained behind them here this afternoon as they play. One of the things Kentucky has to stop this afternoon as they play Auburn is the transition, and that's what Rob will talk about with Ralph Willard this afternoon. You know, last week we were talking about the way LSU gets the ball up and down the floor, but Ralph Willard, as you well know, Auburn has some transition to do. Three great perimeter players in Gallen, Battle, and Dennison. The ability to push the ball up the floor. Here we see Gallen racing it up, splitting the defenders, and finishing the break. A real jet in the open floor. Yeah, just went right between Drought and Wilcox there. He is lightning quick. And now we see him break the pressure. Because of their quickness, they are very good against full court pressure. Here we see great passing and a great finish by Zane Arnold, the big guy inside. And of course, Sir Ralph, we can't forget about uh, Derek Dennison, who gets the break going right here. Derek Dennison is playing right now as well as anybody in the league. Great in the open floor, tremendous athletic ability, and making sound decisions. Here he follows the shot with tremendous athletic ability over the defense. All right, good luck, Ralph. Thanks. And Ralph, back to you. The Kentucky band, always an integral part of any home game. Trying to fire up even louder the 24,000 plus folks that are in here. This has been a tough, tough ticket to get. Kentucky and Auburn, last home game of the year. And let's go to Doug Bruce in our starting lineups. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rupp Arena for basketball action featuring the Tigers of Auburn and your University of Kentucky Wildcats. And now the starting lineups. First for Auburn. At forward, a 6'3 senior from Atlanta, Georgia, number 24, Derek Dennison. At forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Auburn, Alabama, number 44, Chris Brandt. At center, a 6'8 junior from Birmingham, Alabama, number 40, Zane Arnold. At guard, a 6'1 freshman from Pittsview, Alabama, number 21, Ronnie Battle. And at guard, a 5'10 freshman from Miami, Florida, number 14, Reggie Gallon. And the head coach of Auburn, Tommy Joe Eagles. Number 12, Darren Feldhaus. At forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Paintsville, Kentucky. Number 34, John Pelfrey. At center, a 6'7 junior from Somerset, Kentucky. Number 35, Reggie Henson. At guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Indianapolis, Indiana. Number 11, Sean Woods.
Confidence is a big part of succeeding in business today. And as Eastern Kentucky supplier of quality Caterpillar equipment and service, Wayne Supply has built a reputation on the confidence of our customers. Confidence in knowing we'll come through with just the right equipment for the right job, big or small. And confidence in knowing that everything Wayne sells is backed by the best and most complete parts and service support to keep you on the job with less downtime. Whatever your needs in Eastern Kentucky, contact your nearest Wayne Supply branch. Wayne Supplies Confidence. Hey, what do you say there, buddy? It's me, AJ, and I'm so excited about all the great stuff they got down here at Quick Mart, like groceries and good golf gasoline and auto products and snacks that I got my old buddy, Buster Swinesong, the state champion hog caller, to give me a hand. You ready, Buster? Yep. Let her have it. Quick Mart! Quick Mart! Go! 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 Quick Mart! Yeah, that's beautiful. All right, thank you. Hey, wait, Buster. Is that what I think? Yeah, we just go inside. Like finding bargains? I think everyone does. Mountain Ford is having an absolutely unbelievable clearance sale on our remaining new 1989 models. Come with me. Buy this new 1989 Taurus SHO for $1,750 under factory invoice. Or a new 89 Lincoln Continental or Bronco for $1,500 under factory invoice. Over 20 new 89s at unbelievable prices at Mountain Ford Lincoln Mercury, Hazard, Kentucky. The only way to travel is Cadillac style. At Cardinal Chevrolet Cadillac Geo, we have increased our inventory of all vehicles, including Cadillacs. Now you can find the car of your dreams on our lot. Come test drive the luxury and sophisticated performance of a new 1990 Cadillac. Come to Cardinal for our best Cadillac selection ever. Low prices and professional service close to home. We're the heartbeat of the mountains. Cardinal Chevrolet Cadillac Geo. Hazard. A lot to be remembered after this day is over, Rob Bromley. Well, this picture was passed out to the fans as they came in. 24,000 of these, the cats in the locker room, it says. Thanks, UK fans across the top. I think that says it all as far as these crowds have been concerned, Ralph. Kentucky and gets to Auburn. We're ready to go. John Clockerty will toss the ball up. Zane Arnold to jump against Reggie Henson. We're underway. Kentucky has it. Derek Miller. Feldhaus and Woods. This is Pelfrey. The starting five in there for the Wildcats. Hanson with it. Auburn man-to-man -man early round. Woods all the way. Kentucky leads. John Woods puts Kentucky out on top when the pressure comes, Dick. Auburn handled the pressure real well down in Auburn, as you mentioned, Ralph, going over the press for a lot of easy buckets, but not this time. Hanson to Miller. His first two. Kentucky leads it 4 0, and the press comes again. Hanson knocking the way. This crowd is already in mid game form. Well, Rick Patino was worried early about whether or not his team would fight through the emotion and be ready. I don't think he has anything to worry about. Zane Arnold getting it back. Auburn has still not been to their front court. This is the fourth time they would have tried and finally make it. Brandt as they beat the press. Basket by Brandt. Chris Brandt makes it 4-2 Kentucky. We know Auburn knows how to do that. Now Kentucky adjusts. Hanson for a try for two. Battled on the rebound. We played a minute and ten seconds of the first half. Derek Dennison, all-star performer for the Tigers and he charges. Dennison just ran past Derek Miller that time, and Reggie Hansen was able to drop down and pick up that charge. So he leaves Derek right there at the free throw line, but Reggie was down there covering his man. Arnold was able to step out and take the charge. They count the bucket. It's 4-4. Derek Dennison goes over to talk to Tommy Joe Eagles on his way down the court. You know, De Dennison, we talk so much about him as an offensive player, but Ralph, he is third in the conference in steals per game. And that was a big factor in Auburn's win over Kentucky. Now, Rick Pitino was wondering why that basket counted. And we've also got a little contact lens problem on the sideline with Derek Dennison. And John Clockerty and Rick Pitino looking down to the other end saying, what is the problem here? But it is a contact lens problem. And he's wanting to know why the basket counted is, right. is his question. But it's four to four. That's your score. Kentucky and Auburn. 
Derek Dennis who averages 16 points a ball game and 4.6 rebounds. So often we see Reggie Hansen get up from a play like that, go down and get his contact lens adjusted, but uh, they're not fun. I don't know if you've ever fooled with them, but they're not fun. Well, he has to adjust the converse <laughs> out there also. He's doing a complete makeup job. <laughs> well, Dennison is back, and we're ready to go. You know, that helped take this crowd out of the game for a little while, Ralph. Well, I'm sure that it did. And maybe they'll get back into a dick if Kentucky can bomb one out here. This is Woods. Auburn going man-to-man. Feldhouse pushing foul is going to be on Auburn. It's on Zane Arnold. He tried to fight his way through a screen. You're going to see a lot of that today. The conference is wise to Kentucky in the backdoor cuts, and you'll see the, the strong men on the Auburn front line, like Arnold, trying to fight through picks and stop those cutters. This is an, an Auburn team that won't back away from anybody. And now you've got uh, a little bit of contact and no foul call. The Derrick's going at it again. Kentucky's ball out of bounds after the second team foul on Auburn. Pelfrey, Woods. Down to John. John Pelfrey makes it 6 4 Kentucky. Crowd got right back in it there. We played a minute and a half for the first half. Derek Dennison against Pelfrey. Wins the battle, gets to front court. Knocked away by Woods, out of bounds, and Auburn will get it back. And you saw two back tips on that press, and it just did enough to disrupt Auburn offensively and give Kentucky a chance to set up on defense. Coach Patino showing a little <laughs> dribbling extra vision to get it. Nice hands, Coach. Gallon. Gallon, the point guard for the Tigers, and the Wildcats come out of in the zone. Grant, stolen away by Miller. The deep. Derek Miller for three. Partially blocked. Battle with it, but he stepped out of bounds. The foot was on the line. The third Auburn turnover. I think the emotion may have uh, pulled Derek up in the air on that shot. It wasn't the best of shots, but we've seen that before. Woods trying to get it in play to Hanson. Sean Woods. Kentucky and Auburn went at it about a month ago down in Auburn, Alabama. Wildcats led by 15, but lose it by four, 74-70. Knocked away, Kentucky will get it back. With 26 seconds on the shot clock when they get ready to put it back in. Be curious to see what kind of first half Sean Woods has. He's been tremendous in the second half of ball games, but slow to get started. Pelfrey, eight to four, Kentucky. John Pelfrey's fourth point, he's two of two. Knocked away, Auburn really having trouble getting the ball in bounds. And because of that man, Sean Woods, he's active defensively. Gallon. Against Woods. Kentucky trapping him. Derek Dennison. coming out high. They'd like to get the ball as much as they can to Dennison. Dennison is averaging 16 a game. And Ronnie Battle also will put that ball up. This is Grant. Grant is the lowest point getter in the starting lineup, and that's one of the reasons Battle is their leading scorer. He gets three there. Eight to seven, Kentucky by one. Auburn has never led. Ronnie Battle at 18 against Kentucky down in Auburn. Feldhouse dishing it off to Pelfrey. He walked. Shuffle the feet. First Kentucky turnover. Might have done well to go straight up with it, Ralph, to draw that foul, but Pelfrey's playing well. Oops. They catch a run out. This is what they did down at Auburn, and Auburn takes their first lead as Gary Gunnison gets his fourth point. Auburn is 4 of 4 from the field. I was just about to say Pelfrey's playing well, and he and Reggie Hansen let Auburn get behind that press. Hansen had a big night against Tennessee. One of the things that Reggie did not do well in the Auburn game this rebound is Derek Miller gets two. Miller has four points. Kentucky back by one. I think this is going to be quite a ball game. The teams are so similar. Ralph Willard was saying earlier in the week that they mirror each other in style of play and uh, uh, intensity and heart. Kentucky's five out of seven. They're shooting well also. Auburn shooting layups though, Ralph. That's the big difference. A lot of teams have been able to get underneath the Kentucky zone this year. 
That's two. Basket by that thing almost brought rain. He has five already. Auburn back by one. 15.45 left in the first half. Belfort. Little Woods. Feldhouse. Hanson getting by Brandt. What a move by Reggie. He should be able to do that a lot tonight, Ralph, as we see a foul called on Kentucky. But Hanson is so much quicker than Brandt. Derek Miller with a foul, his first foul. First foul called against Kentucky. In the See, he just leaves Brand nailed to the floor there. Nobody can get over. Auburn does the wise thing, avoiding the foul, but Hanson takes Brand out on the floor as he has done with most of the big men in the conference and just whipped him to the basket. 15-24 left. Brand looking, looking, looking. It is inbounds, and finally they get it. Kentucky steals. Miller with it. Miller for three. Well, he is fighting his heart out. Commits his second foul. I think he wants to leave everything on this court today, Ralph. He wants to leave nothing undone. How many hundreds of ball games has Derek Miller played in his life? And today, his mother is here to see him for the first time. The officials, Ali Prescott from Memphis, John Clarity from Charlotte, and Don Ferguson from Savannah. I'll tell you what, the Kentucky coaching staff it keeps track of deflections, as you well know. That's already four by my count for Sean Woods as Richie Farmer gives Derek Miller a blow. Gallon against Woods. Richie's been playing a lot of basketball as of late. As a matter of fact, had the starting role for one game, and Sean Woods came back to win it back away from him. Farmer's doubled his playing time over last year. He's up to 18 minutes a game. Knocked away. This Kentucky ball club, by the way, already has a school record for steals. At 282 coming into this game. 280 was the previous record, 731 game. I'll tell you what gets you steals, Ralph, is hard work and perspiration. That's a three. Three-point basket by Battle. That's six points by Battle. Both of his baskets have come from three-point land, and Auburn has their biggest lead. It's out at two at 14 to 12. And again, Auburn has really taken the crowd out of the game to a degree here. Woods with it. Auburn won here a couple of years ago when John Taylor hit a shot at the horn. Only the second time they had won in Lexington as Kentucky ties it up. Don Kaler still on the Auburn bench. Deflection by Hanson. Woods. Hanson out of bounds. Reggie couldn't get a hold of it, but it was last touched by Auburn. Speaking of the devil. John Kaler getting into the game. We'll tell you a story about Kaler a little bit later on. 14.09 to go. There's time out of the floor, and it's tied. 14 off. send you for a Bud Light, and you bring back... Well, Bud Light won't fill you up, never lets you down. So, there are no men here, there's an unlimited supply of Bud Light, and we can never leave. Correct. Everything else is just a light. We can live with that. Yeah. I guess I never really believed Jesse could do much better in school. I almost didn't graduate myself, so when his teacher said she wanted to talk, I was scared. Well, you can imagine my surprise when she finally said Jesse could make it in college if he just tried. Between that and the look on my boy's face, I knew she was right. Ashland Oil believes teachers change lives. High levels of performance everywhere. That's what I look for. When a person's doing well in one area, more often than not, they're doing a lot of things right. That overall high performance level is what I look for in a financial institution. And that's exactly what I found at Great Financial Federal. Team effort by hardworking people, all giving their best, has made Great Financial Federal one of the strongest financial institutions in America. That's one of the reasons your key to financial security is Great Financial Federal. Fresh, flavor-rich milk. Satisfying and delicious, and produced right here by your neighbors. From the farm to the grocer's shelf, the milk you buy from us is the finest quality available. And Flavor Rich is proud of the fact that our products are locally produced by your neighboring dairy farmers. Farm fresh milk, 
made right here and brought to you by Flavor Rich. When you have a choice, buy Flavor Rich first. It is 14-14. Kentucky and Auburn going at it. 14.09 to go. We mentioned the fact that Derek Miller's mother was here to see him play basketball for the very first time ever. And Rob Bromley's with her now. Well, Derek's mom, Ralph, is Bernice Hawkins. And uh, Bernice, I know you've got to be awfully proud of Derek today. Yes, I am. Very proud of him. I think he's trying his heart out today, isn't he? He's really putting a lot into it. He certainly is. And I hope you're going to win the game. What do you think of this place? I know it's the first time first time you've been here to see him play. What do you think of Rupp Arena and this crowd and everything surrounding the ball game? I think it's very outstanding. Well, I know, I know you got to be awfully proud of your son. He, I've known him now for four years. He's a heck of a kid, isn't he? He really is. Very disciplined. All right, Mrs. Hawkins, good luck to you and good to see you. Thank you very much. Bernice Hawkins, Ralph. Rob, Derek was telling me a few weeks ago that she was unable to pick up the games on radio. And, of course, they haven't been on television this year live where she could watch them. So she was dialing the 900 number that we keep promoting and listening to all the ball games that she could with her boy player. He's a great young man. You know, there was a national basketball magazine route that fired a cheap shot at the university over that 900 system. But in fact, it was the brainchild of the company that puts these television games on the air. And all it does is make the games available to fans. What's wrong with that? I guess the magazine didn't think of it first. I guess not. 14-14. Kentucky and Auburn going at it. This is Feldhaus. Darren Feldhaus. What a year he's having. Slow to get started, Ralph, but he's finishing in a rush. Most consistent player for my money on this team. This is Battle. Ricky Gallon out of Miami, Florida. Kentucky not really extending that zone, showing a lot of respect for Auburn's outside shooters. Foul underneath, John Kentucky. We were talking about how Auburn mirrors Kentucky. You like to see the Wildcats pounded inside. Well, and Patino says, his first get it down to the low post players to make these Auburn outside Auburn shooters more effective. We've seen that from Auburn, as the Tigers have been able to control things from beyond three-point range. Now, Brandt goes to the free throw line for the first time. And, Ralph, here's a guy who last year reminded me a little bit of Derek Miller's sophomore season. He played only about 200 minutes and scored a total of 48 points. This year, the top rebounder on this ball club and the third leading scorer. Homegrown product. Played high school ball for an Auburn, Alabama. Rebound Reggie Hanson. That's one more than he had at Auburn. 16-15. <laughs> Kentucky by one. Woods to the hoop and he's fouled. Dennison got it. That'll be two on Dennison. Three on Auburn. Team fouls are even up now. Sean Woods, as uh, Patino said, has to make other players better, but he also has to do that without sacrificing his offensive game. And right now with his jump shot, not quite where he wants it, that's his best offensive move, taking it to the hole, either getting that running one-hander or going to the free-throw line, and he's prospered there lately. Woods coming into the game was 53 of 80 from the free-throw line. That is his first toss there today. Sean has three. One shot, Patrick gets into the ball game. Larry Patrick out of Palm Beach, Florida. He's a junior. And he'll shoot that three, Ralph. And Woods missing it after giving Kentucky a two-point lead, and Auburn has the ball. Ricky Gallup. Kentucky shows him a 2-3. Into Brandt. Rebound to Hanson. 17-15 Kentucky. Woods over to Brasso. Hanson. He lost Brand again, Ralph, but he made him pay for it. Longest lead for the Wildcats. It's at 5, at 20-15. Battle with it. Twelve forty-six left, first half. If Kentucky wins this ball game, they will assure themselves of at least a 500 season with two more ball games to go. You're going to see the Auburn team overload one side and try to shake one of its shooters loose on the far side. The Kentucky coach is very concerned about that in their preparation. They say, we've got to get over and get a man on, on that shooter. Gallon getting it in. The Kaler. Battle for three. Grasso on the rebound to Woods, and the Cats are running again.
He did not score in the first game against Auburn. Foul is on Brasso. John Plockett, he says he reached in. That'll be two on him. Kentucky leading it by eight. That's their biggest margin. Coaching yep. staff constantly reminding the players, Ralph, don't reach. It just it takes away everything you've done well defensively, and Brasso being a freshman is guilty of that probably as much as anybody. Woods is out. Miller is in for Kentucky. The battle blocked by Hanson. And Hanson fouled him on the second try. Reggie draws number one. Shades of Jonathan Davis. Now, multiple uh, blocks. He got it cleanly the first time. At, uh, battle made a nice move and sort of changed directions. Actually drew the foul heading for the free throw line. And, uh, Battle, the number one three-point shooter for the Auburn Tigers, had 29 points at LSU. Not bad for a redshirt freshman. Pretty good free throw shooter. He's 54 of 73 now. Seven points for him. Pitview, Alabama. He has eight, and it's 23-17. Kentucky with 12-12 remaining. Kentucky is 10 out of 13 from the field, and Auburn has the steal. Oh. It counts, and the foul will be on John Taylor, who had a blood clot last year, and he had to set out the year. Didn't know where he'd ever be able to play again. Now, those of you who think Richie Farmer can't jump, take a look at that. I don't know if it was clean, but he was up there. There's a camera up behind that goal, and Ricky called it the slam camera before the ball game. <laughs> 23-19, it remains. And Auburn with a possession after a basket. Patino hates that, but there's an unforced error. Five turnovers for Auburn. You can tell this, this crowd respects Auburn, knows that anything can happen to them. 11-44, Richie Farmer. Hanson for three. They deck him and no call. Walking against Miller. Patino said, pass the ball. That's a good impersonation of it. Uh, been hanging around the last couple of days, <laughs> working on this Rick Patino special. Well, another run out, battle with it. This is what Auburn did so well against Kentucky down in Auburn, Alabama. And Kentucky cannot allow that. That's one of the things that Ralph Wood and Rob Brownlee talked about beginning of this program. You're going to the same spot every time, Ralph. We'll see if it happens after this possession. A little holding foul under here on Brandt as you heard Jadon Ferguson make the call. That'll be number one on Brandt. Uh, officials have to sell the calls, Ralph, and I bought that one. Uh, what a voice. Well, that's his actor voice. Coming. That's right. Feldhouse and Woods checking back in, and uh, Farmer and Brasso back to the bench. I, I'm assuming they were resting Feldhouse because they've got to have rebounding strength. That's something Feldhouse gives them over Brasso, but rebounds just killed them down there at Auburn. 18 by Zane Arnold, 9 for Chris Brandt, and Auburn with some substitution. Arnold coming back into the ballgame. 23-21, into Pelfrey, Woods. I think all the players like for Derek Miller to have a big ball game today. They look for him, trying to get him the ball early. Kentucky coaches ask the players to dedicate their efforts to Derek. Feldhouse against Kaler. A little wide on that pass, and it's out of bounds. It's been kind of fun, though, Ralph, over the last part of the season. It's Patino's asking for some fouls inside. To watch Feldhouse and Pelfrey work a little two-man game, they're good buddies on and off the floor, and it pays off sometimes. Dennis, watch the far sideline. Let's see if Dennison gets away. Dennison is back into the ball game. This is Patrick. Patrick, not a starter, but he plays an awful lot. John Taylor. He charged. John Taylor goes for the run. Well, he had the nerve to complain about it, Ralph, but... Uh, you can see him lower his shoulder. He's built like a football player. 6'6", 230. It's almost as though he braces himself here. Take a look. Wham. Pretty close. <laughs> yeah. 10.43 to go. First half of play. Kentucky by two. They trail by two, led by eight. John Pelfer. Kentucky in a dry spell right at the moment. Feldhaus. Over to Pelfrey. Back to Feldhaus. Dropped it out of bounds. Six turnovers for Kentucky. And the second time, Pelfrey and Feldhaus have misconnected. And both times, they were open. Patrick. 
Miller almost took it away from him. He did. He bounced it back on the baseline. It'll be Kentucky's ball. Derek Miller's game has really evolved, Ralph. He's developed so much defensively under Rick Pitino, who says, I'd love to have Derek for another couple of years. I think the fans would like to see that, too. At seven turnovers for Auburn. Hanson with it. But a Woods. Woods against Gallon. He got in trouble down there. Bellhouse for three. Rebound Kaler, and they'll have another run out. Dennison. Dennison has given us our third tie of the day. It's tied at 23 all. Auburn has outscored Kentucky 8-0 in this run. Feldhaus to Pelfrey for three. A pushing off foul is going to be on uh, Zane Arnold, his second. That for Auburn will be number six. You know, if you look at two ball clubs that don't go very deeply into their benches, you wouldn't expect a physical kind of game. You'd think by now they would sort of play a little more conservatively, but these two front lines are going at it. There's time up. 9.52 to go, and it's tied up at 23 all. We'll be right back. to stay awake so I can watch all of it. I know. I'll go to Quick Mart and get some snacks and that'll help me stay awake. Or I'll take my little TV so I don't miss any of the good stuff. <laughs> go, Cats! Hey, AJ, the Cats were tough today. How about that final score? Shh, don't tell me. I've been waiting all day to watch it. Uh, he never did get to see the final score. Commonwealth Equipment, your authorized John Deere industrial equipment dealer, servicing the needs of the coal industry, the timber industry, and the area's contractors. Dozers, backhoes, excavators, and other heavy equipment can be found at Commonwealth Equipment's locations in Pikeville, Hindman, Middle Creek, and Kermit, West Virginia. For equipment, service, parts, and rentals, call Commonwealth Equipment, your John Deere dealer. Johnson Industries produces quality equipment to meet the coal industry's needs. Each product is manufactured with pride at their modern industrial facility. After careful assembly, every product is strenuously tested and inspected before being released for sale. Johnson Industries offers a full factory warranty, a huge inventory of parts, daily UPS parts delivery, and field service personnel. Johnson Industries now provides qualified customers a no interest lease purchase plan. This is Iron Horse. I've got a bogey at 2 o'clock. Let's get him, Iron Horse. Pick him up, Werewolf. I've lost him in the sun. He's coming around my tail. This bogey's all over me. I've got trouble, Iron Horse. I got him, Werewolf. He's broken off. Look at him run. to Gabriel and Rob Bromley. I think the answer's thumbs up so far on Rick Pitino. The baseball team for the Wildcats has certainly made great strides over the last few years, and Keith Madison's with Rob Bromley now. Well, the baseball season will get started shortly. Keith, I know you got a new stadium over there. You're excited about that. We're really excited about that, Rob. It's really come along nicely. By March 6th, our first game, it should be about 90% finished. And then later on in March, it should be 100% finished. It's going to be beautiful. What kind of a ball club are you going to have now, just briefly? We've got an experienced club in the positions, but on the, uh, as our pitching staff goes, we're very inexperienced. We have seven freshman pitchers led by one senior. Uh, he's an all-conference candidate, so we're looking forward to maybe the young pitchers coming on towards the end of the year. All right, I know you're going to open up the season down in Savannah, aren't you? That's right, Rob. Uh, we're opening up next Friday down in Savannah against Mercer University, and uh, hopefully we can get off to a good start. All right, we look forward to it. Thank you, Rob. Keith Madison, Ralph. 9.52 to go, first half of play. 69% shooting for Auburn, 63 for the Wildcats. Well, again, layups will do that to you. Those are healthy figures at both ends. Belfry getting it inbounds with pressure. 
Taylor on the rebound. Humphrey really struggling the last couple of weeks. Blocked by Miller. Derek Miller getting it after Pelfrey. I think Pelfrey's grown tired. Offensive foul. Woods getting number one. Let's take another look. You can judge for yourself. Was it a good call? Yeah, probably. Give Auburn credit for hustle. Auburn gets it back after a Derek Miller block shot. And a turnover on a foul by Woods. Ricky Gallup. Played at the same high school down in Miami as Martinez, the UK recruit. Jamel. 23-23. Out to Woods. Pelfrey. Auburn really sticky with this man-to-man. -man. Miller with it. Derek has seven, and his mama raises a high five <laughs> on the other end. Out of bounds, Kentucky. She can be just as proud of his defense today, but if you're going to hit your first three, why not do it with a little flash? Use every bit of the rim. Under nine minutes to go in the first half. Kentucky back by three, having led by eight. Belfry. Auburn's got a couple of home games left, but it gets some pretty tough competition. Kentucky's only conference game remaining is down at Ole Miss. Tough Zane defense. Hartland to steal. He double dribble. He did. Good call by Mr. Hacker, but tough Auburn defense making it very difficult for Kentucky. That's nine turnovers for Auburn. Kentucky has committed eight. Auburn had only 11 turnovers down there on the plane, so uh, if they pile up, you'll see perhaps cheaper Kentucky baskets. Ronnie Battle coming back into the ball game as Patrick goes out for Auburn. Kentucky just trailing Auburn by two in rebounds. That's not, been a lot of missed shots. Right, not many rebounds to be had. Sean Woods. Now to Feldhaus. Good move. That's eight for Derek. Woods made them respect him by shooting earlier. He went up to cover him, and he made them pay. Arnold double dribbled again, and he gets wide with it. He also traveled. Battle. That's two. Battle has 12. Auburn got away with it and got the bucket there, but I think Auburn's getting a little rattled. A try for three. Rebound, Denison. Auburn lusts to run. Sonny Smith used to tell me that he made a deal with a team down at Auburn when he was coaching him. He had let him run when they had the ball if they'd play defense when the other team did. That sounds fair to me. Ed Murphy with a great comment about Sonny's teams, how well they rebounded. He said, they let you shoot it, but only once. <laughs> Good play by Kaler. Boy, is he a scrappier? Look at this. It's going to be Auburn's ball. Great it, hustle on both ends. I was going to say. Kaler is the guy who started it off. And there's Derek Miller picking himself up again. But John Kaler is the kind of player a, a new coach like Tommy Joe Eagles loves. And Jonathan Davis gives Reggie Hansen a break. John Taylor getting it inbound. Let's see if they go right at Davis. Davis trying to front Zane Arnold to keep the ball out of his hand. This is battle. Taylor, battle for three. And a pushing off underneath the basket. Going to be on Kentucky. Basket will count. Battle has picked up his 15th point. That makes it 28-28. Arnold was wearing Jonathan Davis on his hip. Davis fighting to get around him. Arnold throwing some elbows, and apparently when the official took notice, it was when Davis was trying to claw his way back around. Davis gets the foul, and he'll go out of the ball game as Kentucky brings Hanson back in. Now, we're in the bonus situation here, so this could be a five-point turnaround for Auburn. And the second time Auburn's had more than one shot at the basket within one possession. Zane Arnold, poor free throw shooter, 33 of 60. But he gives Auburn the lead. He had 15 points and 18 rebounds for Tommy Joe Eagles when the Wildcats played him. That's Aubby. Tigers aren't alone here. Virtually alone, but not quite. Two in a row. 30 to 28. That equals Auburn's biggest lead in the first half. Kentucky's had him down by eight. They've had him down by five. And Auburn continues to fight back here in the first half. Very confident ball club. Auburn has won six out of seven games this month. Yeah. 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 
Jeffrey. Heavy traffic and draws the foul. But John taking it to the hoop strongly. You were talking about perhaps John being tired, Rob. I think this goes back to that Alabama game here at Ruff when he played just magnificently as he uh, shows on this effort here. He just played a superb game, feeling the effects of the flu, but I wondered if it didn't leave him drained afterwards. I think it has. Uh, I'm talking to him. He, he, things are a bit slower paced than mm -hmm. they were at the beginning of the year. He says he feels fine, but yeah. you're right. I think he looks a little run down. That is his fifth point. Well, the game has been tied now. A total of five times. Kentucky on the steal, knocked it out of bounds. Well, so. they are still contesting every pass of the Wildcats, not backing off. That'll eventually wear the other guy down, the way they're playing defense. Right. A little over seven minutes left. 30 all. Last home game of the year for Kentucky. Grant. And he's fouled. He was fouled before the shot. Woods is the guy who held on to it. His second foul. Rick Patino begs to differ, but I think he knows what that'll get him. Horse. <laughs> Grant, Grant had his uh, picture in the paper a couple of weeks ago uh, alongside a picture of Brooks Downing from the UK Sports Information Office, uh, a look-alike. Maybe he can meet Brooks while he's here. Well, if he goes flying over the press table, he just might meet him the hard way. Woods with the ball. Miller's in front of him, but he can't get it to it. Now to Hanson. Over Brant. Hanson on the rebound. And he's fouled by Brant. Well, you mentioned Auburn maybe getting tired from the effects of that Kentucky uh, press. Now you're seeing the Tigers beginning to reach a little bit on defense. And they may be getting a little bit fatigued. Auburn by one with Reggie Hanson going to the line for one of the bonus. Well, Kentucky's got him back next year. Probably move him over to a forward. Reggie getting six. That's his natural position in college. Out of Pulaski County. Came into the game at 75 of 105 from the free throw line. What a job he's done at center though, Ralph. Especially as we said earlier, taking his big guys out on the floor. Feldhaus. Going to be on Kentucky. I think it's on Darren Feldhaus. Nope, make it Pilper. That'll be his second. Take another look. Auburn had inside position. Let's see where the ball was. A hard kick. That's a tough one to call. Both players going for it, but Auburn on the inside. Generally, the team on the inside will get that call. Gallon with one in the bonus. First trip to the line for this ball game, and that's his third point. Gallon makes it 33-31, and once again, Auburn leads it by two. They've never been able to extend it more than a two-point lead. Three seconds inside the lane. Kentucky got caught happy. Looked like Feldhaus was the guy in there. Well, if he was, it's because Brandt was leaning on him. They were really battling in there. Turnovers are dead even now at nine apiece. When's the last time you saw three seconds called? Uh, down at uh, Alabama the other night. Is that right? 33-31, Auburn looking for the biggest lead, and Grant gets it for them, and he's fouled. Well, Auburn will not give up. They keep finding you back. Chris Grant gets his six point. He only averages 4.6 a game. Once again, Auburn goes down the far sideline, isolates a man, and how Brandt beat Kentucky back is beyond me. He's the slowest man on the floor for Auburn, but he was all alone now with a chance for three. Feldhaus steps in and gets the rebound after Auburn gets the biggest lead out at four. Woods with it. Try for three. Auburn getting in and running right back. What a pace. Gallon gives Auburn a six-point lead. 37-31. Reggie Gallon really challenging Sean Woods at the point. He is very quick. 
A lot of teams in this league like to run. Two of them are on the floor today. Grant boxing out well. Run out again. Dennison against Woods. Woods draws the foul. That'll be his third. This is becoming a replay, Ralph, of the last Kentucky-Auburn game. The Tigers doing the majority of the rebounding, getting the runouts like this one. Dennison almost got this one to fall. What an athlete he is, but Woods at least saving a two-pointer. Right now, uh, Auburn shooting a disproportionate amount of free throws. Auburn has 10 rebounds to Kentucky's eight. Dennison's first free throws of the day gets him his seventh point as Tommy Joe Eagles walks down to the bench. Auburn by seven. And now the Tigers by eight. Exactly the number of points that Derek Dennison has. Well, Kentucky almost throwing it away. Woods. That's Rencher into the game. He played against Kentucky down at Auburn. Didn't score. Foul's going to be on Dennison, his third. The guards on both teams have committed a lot of fouls. Well, as we said earlier, they're reaching, they're scrapping a lot of quickness out there. And uh, Auburn, as Kentucky has done, contesting every pass today. We can't say enough about what Rick Pitino has done with his team. And Tommy Joe Eagles with a ball club that I didn't see winning more than two conference games, Ralph. This is impressive. Yeah, they came into the ball game 8-7, and seven, while Kentucky's 9-7. and seven. Auburn 12-14 and 14 overall. The Wildcats 13-12. and 12. I thought 10 would be the maximum they would win this year. No question. Brasso getting it. No, this is an Auburn team that plays the likes of a Michigan State, Connecticut, Southern Miss. They have actually played better in conference play this year than they did in pre-conference play, and it's usually Auburn losing one, maybe two games in the pre-conference part of the schedule. Tougher pre-conference schedule this year, Ralph, and I think Auburn's had in the past. Auburn's 12 of 18 from the field. Another foul. Auburn getting the run out and Pelfrey committing his third foul. They're running Kentucky to death. They may be tying Kentucky down. It could be, and once again, you can see who's at the other end of it, Mr. Brandt, but that's because the guards have done a great job against Kentucky's pressure. Auburn's guards keeping their cool. As we said earlier, they were getting a little bit rattled. They rallied, and they've used their quickness to beat Kentucky's first line of defense. Mr. Brandt, Mr. Arnold, they have chances to get down and shake themselves loose. Unfortunately for Kentucky, Chris Brandt can't hit the free throws right now. Keeler, the wrencher. That's about the only thing Brandt's not doing well. Right. Kentucky trying to force him out on the floor a little further. John Keeler. Kentucky down by 6, 39-33. Battle. Foul is going to be on Auburn. Grant was going over the back. And that's for Grant will be his that third foul. He's the third Auburn yes, player to get three fouls. Kentucky has an equal number with three. Watch the effort by Hanson inside. He really blocks out well. Brant had no shot at that. And Kentucky needs more of that from Reggie Hanson. And they need, they need Hanson to hit some free throws here. a bonus for Reggie. Reggie getting a seven. Well, the other night in Tennessee, he was shooting the free throws off the heel of his hand. We were talking about it before the ball game with him, and he said, I might have been, because I'm going to see if I can make an adjustment. Too bad you couldn't talk to him before he shot those two guns. Eight points for Reggie. Time out of the floor. 4.56 to go, and it's 39-35, Auburn. Sure. Was that your sister? I'm not sure. 
fresh, flavor-rich milk. Satisfying and delicious, and produced right here by your neighbors. From the farm to the grocer's shelf, the milk you buy from us is the finest quality available. And Flavor Rich is proud of the fact that our products are locally produced by your neighboring dairy farmers. Farm fresh milk, made right here and brought to you by Flavor Rich. When you have a choice, buy Flavor Rich first. Napoleon Bonaparte, a self-proclaimed emperor, a soldier, a man with an odd habit of keeping his hand in his vest. Was it just a quirk, or was he hiding something? It's been a mystery until today. One taste, and you're stuck on Golden Flame forever. Mark and Rennie and little Lindsay are a young family just starting out. They don't have a lot of money for life insurance. I'm their State Farm agent, Gaylord Mooseman. Instead of giving Mark and Rennie a big life insurance sales talk, I did a lot of listening. And we came up with a plan that's going to work for their budget and little Lindsay's future, too. State Farm agents are good listeners because we want you to have life insurance you can live with. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Well, the next UK basketball television ball game will be in South Bend, Indiana. We'll travel up there for the showdown of the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. All the action, March 5th. Check your local listings for the delayed broadcast here on the UK Basketball Network. That young man in the blue shirt is a wild-eyed big blue fan. That is Waylon Jennings and Jesse Coulter's son. That's the famous Shooter Jennings. And Maureen Raffles sitting just to his left. I think Shooter has more UK posters and paraphernalia than <laughs> the bookstore here. Shooter still play the drums, Ralph? He still plays the drums. Looks like his mama, doesn't he? Thank goodness. I was going to say. <laughs> you have to favor one side of that family. Maybe he can sing like daddy, but I'm happy for him he looks like mom. Sing like mama wouldn't be bad either. That's true. 39-35. Auburn leads it by four with just under five minutes to go. People are saying that about my son, too. And I don't sing. This attendance of 24,174 is the seventh largest crowd ever for Rupp Arena. They've got to be wondering right now. They beat it. Auburn gets the two points. They wouldn't give up. That's Battle getting 17. What a first half. 41-35, Auburn by six. And Auburn half with the catch. Here, Kentucky has to come down and work so hard on offense. Auburn runs for layups. A lot of good athletes on this Auburn ball club. Not big, but certainly quick. Belfry for two. Can't find a range as of late. He's missed four in a row. That'll be 35 for the Wildcats, 41 for Auburn with 4-0-4 left. Kentucky needs to win this to clinch an upper division finish in the Southeastern Conference. Look at this, Auburn needs second shots, third shots. Finally, they don't get the fourth because Pelfrey gets it. Farmer. Farmer's fouled by Wrencher. We've seen Richie Farmer late in the year do like he did in high school. Start to take people one-on-one. -on -one. I think he plays really well when he does that. He does, Ralph. And you can see he actually has a step on his man here going to the basket. That's why he drew the foul. Farmer is a deceptive athlete, as Patino has said before. He did it right in front of Tommy Joe Eagles there. Not too thrilled with the foul. But, you know, for all the talk about Richie Farmer not being a tremendous athlete, somehow or another he gets the ball in the basket. Richie doesn't miss many of them. 41-35, he knocked the ball away. And he tripped the guy. He gets by with that. And Pelfrey comes up with it. Thanks to another back tip. Richie over to Brasso. Kentucky needs a bucket. With 3.17 to go, they trail by six. And not shooting well as of late. Brasso. Has seven points. 
41-37 Auburn. Three minutes to go. The crowd is, wants to get back in the game. That may help him. Richie did a good defensive job, and Gallon dribbles it off of his foot. Gallon wants to know why there wasn't a foul called there. They could easily have said, why not an offensive foul? Let's take a look. Farmer with position. Probably a good no call. Gallon lost concentration. Interesting. Kentucky now in a man-to-man -man route at the other end. 2.51 left. Richie Farmer at the point. Throws it away. John Kaler walked. Air ball. So it'll be out of bounds to Kentucky and a big break to the Wildcats there. It certainly was. But once again, there's Kaler hustling. He's trying to squeeze everything he can out of the rest of his career at Auburn. He's missed so much time with the blood clot, the knee injury. 239. Farmer in the face of Kaler. Good pressure by Kaler. Forcing him to change the trajectory of that shot. Gallon against Farmer. Kaler having it knocked away out of bounds. We might point out that the computer system that helps us at the ball game is down. That's why we're ordinarily able to tell you what kind of points Kentucky gets off its turnovers. I can't imagine the Wildcats have gotten too many tonight. They just don't seem to be executing well offensively. Patrick with it. Ricky Gallup against Richie. Man-to-man, -man, the Wildcats with Kaler oh, just nice over top of Feldhaus. Kaler getting his first field goal. 43-37, Auburn by six. This is a ball pump that went on an 8-0 run after Kentucky had him down 23-15 to tie it up. Then they went ahead. Kentucky's not been able to catch back up. This is Brasso. Feldhaus on the rebound. Back to Pelfrey. Pelfrey, good move by John Pelfrey. That's eight. That's an educated move by a guy who's played a lot of ball, John Pelfrey. And just no foul. foul. Right. <laughs> but he made a great move, and then he commits his fourth foul. Timeout. 43-39. Auburn leads with a minute 34 to go. Contract calls for bringing Bud Light to the valley. No wonder we're over budget. Bud Light won't fill you up, never lets you down. Which in turn keeps the Bud Light cold. Everything else is just a light. So your Ford F-150 has more standard power than the Chevy. Yeah. And more torque for towing. Right. And your Ford with an automatic and a V8 costs less than the Chevy automatic and a V6. It's true. And those aren't the reasons you bought the Ford. No. F-150, where quality is standard. Your Ford dealer. So why did you? Well, after the rain stops, you can almost hear your Chevy rust in the night. <laughs> Mark and Rennie and little Lindsay are a young family just starting out. They don't have a lot of money for life insurance. I'm their State Farm agent, Gaylord Mooseman. Instead of giving Mark and Rennie a big life insurance sales talk, I did a lot of listening. And we came up with a plan that's going to work for their budget and little Lindsay's future, too. State Farm agents are good listeners because we want you to have life insurance you can live with. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. In 1935, Ada Sawyer's dreamed of having running water and electric lights. Her granddaughter, Sarah, dreams of reaching the stars. Thanks to the Rural Electric Program, Ada's dream came true, and we'll be here to be part of Sarah's. Kentucky's Rural Electric Cooperatives. Power to fulfill dreams. Coming out, John Pelfrey. John Pelfrey goes out as you see him walk off the floor, and Junior Braddy comes out of the game. Non-scholarship player out of Savannah, Georgia. A little more quickness in the backcourt, Ralph, but not as much size up there on that front line and rebounds as we said so many times important when you're going up against the likes of the Auburn Tigers a small ball club that ranks third in the conference in overall rebounds battle with quite a first half 
That's 19 points for him in the first half. He averages 17-2 a game. Farmer against Kittle with the Wildcats trailing at 45-39. Feldhouse against Kaler to Richie for three. Braddy on the rebound. That's a skip pass over the backboard. Three points by Grasso. He's the first Kentuckian to get double figures. Puts him within a shot now. Taylor. Foul on Kentucky. They say the Grasso did not get set. Take another look. Grasso sliding to his right a little bit. Good call. It was a good call. What made that play possible, though, is the way Auburn's player did not panic here at midcourt when he was trapped. Hanson almost made the steal. I believe it was Patrick recovered, got the ball to Kaler. He was loose for a layup attempt. The quickest way to quiet a crowd is to do that. You bet. And that. 47-42. Kaler left the crowd here stunned two years ago, as you'll recall. He hit the winning shot. And the Auburn Radio Network went crazy. We heard <laughs> War Eagle about it for two minutes. Braddy. Handsome is foul. You know, right, what I recall about that is that human pyramid they built. That was on throwing that themselves on top of each other there. The Tigers at the... Right in front of their bench. That was one of the biggest moments in the history of that program. Battle committing the foul, his first, and Reggie Hansen will go back to the line. He was there a moment ago and hit two in a row. Tommy Joe Eagles never relaxes, just like Rick Pitino. Every minute on that sideline. Reggie with nine. He was arguing that he was not shooting. It's all academic now because if it had been one of the bonus, he would have got it. Michael Parks is into the game, replacing Brasso. Kentucky's second walk-on gets up. I think Rick Pitino would like to have played these guys towards the end of the game with a big lead. He really needs an effort from them now, though. 47-44, Kentucky within a three-point shot again. Here comes the pressure. Ratty, uh, did he commit the foul? No, walking, palming the ball. That's the official call. Well, that was good defense out of two walk-ons. You Junior bet. Braddy and Michael Parks caused that one. Well, I was just about to say fresh legs always help, Ralph, especially when you can put forth that kind of defensive effort. Farmer going under and he's fouled. Again, an explosive step there by Richie Farmer. I think it takes the people by surprise. The foul on Auburn. Oh. And Farmer goes to the line. Ricky Gallon is the man who committed it. Farmer at the line. The last time there, he missed the front end of one and a bonus. Well, he's in there because he can shoot it, Ralph. He's got to start hitting. Richie gets his first points. He had three against Auburn. First time the two teams met. We've talked about Richie's quickness this year. You just have to remember one simple thing. He hits the second. He's not hauling an extra 20 pounds this year. They had the run out, but couldn't get the ball to him, and Auburn calls a timeout. The reason they couldn't get the ball is because Feldhaus was right in the face of John Peter. 35 seconds to go, and Auburn called that timeout. They lead Kentucky by one at 47 to 46. Kentucky still undefeated at home in the Southeastern Conference, and of course, the Tigers would love to spoil the big party today. Everybody knows what's going to happen after the ball game. Almost unimaginable that this Kentucky team would end up the season with a loss, but as you said, the Tigers aren't going to back off. They've not been intimidated yet. They showed the signs early, but they were able to take the crowd out, as you mentioned earlier, with that eight-point run. The Wildcats still have done a nice job of clawing their way back in offensively. It's the Rick Patino Show on the UK Basketball Television Network every Sunday. Check your local listings as Rick will join Rob Romley tomorrow night. We'll highlight this ball game, the Tennessee game, and look ahead. The Ole Miss game coming up Wednesday night. And it's not also, on television, but it'll be on the University of Kentucky Radio Network. We'll also talk on the Sunday show with Lala Jones. One of the great ones. 25-0. That is the record on Seniors Day at the Wildcats' lair. The last time they lost a senior ball game 
on seniors night as they call it was in 1964 the loss of 67 60 to St. Louis back when St. Louis U had quite a program starting to rebound a little bit but Auburn would like to be the spoiler tonight Auburn now trying to get it back in bounds Gallon Ducky tries to put the trap on him. Taylor with it. Wrencher. Shot clock is off. 24 seconds to go. Wrencher. Parks with him. Auburn wanted to go to the mayor with a the lead. They lead it by one. Battle. Two walk-ons playing for the Wildcats in the final seconds of the first half. Gallon throws it up. And went there 20 times and hit 14 free throws. You see the three-pointers, Kentucky hitting just 33% from three-point range, and Auburn doing a good job on the boards, out-rebounding the Cats here by two at the break. 19-17, the Tigers committed 13 turnovers, Kentucky 10. Here's the scoring. The Cats with two players in double figures. Hanson and Brasso have 10 apiece. Brasso a couple of big baskets in the closing minutes of that first half. John Pelfrey with eight, and Darren Feldhouse six, so it is well-balanced there. Here's the Auburn scoring. Battle with 19. He had some runouts in that first half, as did Derek Dennison. Brandt had a runout. Battle is the only player in double figures with 19. Dennison has eight, and Brandt, Gallon, and Kaler all with six apiece. And here are the special stats where we see Kentucky has put up 12 three-point shots. The goal is 25. They have six offensive rebounds so far, not quite halfway there. They have 27 deflections, however, so they are well on their way to the goal of 35. They have just four steals, however, in the first half, and the goal for the entire ball game is 12. It is Auburn by one, 47-46. We've still got 20 minutes to play, and I'll send you back now to Ralph and Dick. Fellas, thank you very much, Rob. Dick, what Kentucky has to do now in the second half is exactly what we said they had to do in the first half, which they didn't do, and that stopped the transition game. No question about it. The cheap buckets just built up for Auburn, got the confidence going for the Tigers. We knew Auburn would be tough on the boards, but the coaching staff all week talked about those cheap buckets. Ralph Willard and Rob talked about it in pregame. Now we'll see if the Wildcats will listen. And the other thing that Kentucky's going to have to do is do a better job on the backboard. They hung in with Auburn for a long while, but then all of a sudden, Auburn just back took command of everything out there. Well, there was one exchange down there where Auburn, I think he counted four, four shots, shots at the basket, off him within two feet. You can't win that way. Well, Kentucky against Auburn. It's a big ball game here in Rupp Arena. It's the last game of the year for the Wildcats. They've won every game in Rupp that they played in Southeastern Conference team. The Kentucky lineup will start back the way that they began the ball game with Pelfrey, Wood, Hanson, Bellhouse, and Miller. Auburn comes back the way they began the game. That'll be Dennison, Brandt, Arnold, Battle, Gallon. Brandt to put it in play. Auburn by one as we start the second 20 minutes, 47-46. Kentucky coming out a little higher on that zone. Kentucky finished the first half man to man. A try for three. He's been red hot from there. Auburn getting it and Dennison putting it back up and in. Good second effort as Dennison comes through with it. Tougher to rebound out of a zone, Ralph, but you just have to put forth the effort. The ball was kicked by Dennison and it'll be out of bounds to Kentucky. Last 20 minutes of basketball in Rupp Arena for Derek Miller. He's had a quiet game so far, only seven points, only one three-pointer, but a good job defensively early in the game. Following on many of these same stations will be carrying the awards ceremony that Coach Patino had wanted to have before the fans here in Rupp Arena rather than have an awards night dinner. So we want to pay back the fans for what they've given us this year. Grant underneath, blocked, Feldhouse with it. Kentucky can cut it to one. Woods, Sir Miller, back to Woods. He missed the trip shot. Gallon coming back. Grant, and now Arnold. Arnold gets four. They missed a golden opportunity. Kentucky's missed a lot of trip shots this year. And it cost Kentucky at the other end. That was a four-point swing. We played a minute and ten seconds of the second half. Darren Feldhouse, Reggie Hansen, 
Auburn man to man. They played man to man all night long, and Hanson is fouled. And you can see Auburn now as it's trying to take away that backdoor cut from Kentucky. Well, the fouls are starting to pile up, and you can tell what Auburn's trying to do. Rick Pitino constantly tells his team at halftime, your run is going to come, make the most of it. Yeah, he told him the same thing at halftime down in Tennessee. I don't know if anyone thought it would be quite that dramatic. But the Cats are going to have to shut Auburn down so it can take advantage of its run offensively when it comes. Reggie Hanson at the line. Reggie tonight is at 6 out of 7 from the free throw line. Kentucky's 13 out of 16 overall. And for Reggie, that is number 11. Now, did you counsel him on his shot in particular, Ralph, or was he just talking to you about it? I counseled him. I want to tell you. 51-48. <laughs> You've done good. Grant with it. The Gallon. Gallon underneath. Oh. That's one on one and beats it. That's eight points for Ricky Gallon. Reggie Gallon getting it. 53 48. They try to get it in there to Phil House and or to uh, Miller. Miller finally takes it. Miller gets his ninth point. 53 50. Becky coming back with the pressure. Knocking it away is Woods. Good steal. Tom Miller. Derrick gets it. Derrick's 11. 53 52. And here come the Cats. Welcome back to the game, Sean Woods. I think the fans anticipated another Auburn turnover. They were in the game so loudly. There it is. He was also fouled, so he'll be able to go back to the line. Hanson keys the break with a good defensive play. Now watch Woods. Good look fake. And Gallon can't get there in time for the charge. And Gallon commits his second foul. And Auburn calls a timeout before Reggie Hanson shoots the free throw. Kentucky leads it by 1, 17-29 to go. Man, what a day. I could sure use a vacation. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'd like to be right here. Bugs. Hey, maybe tomorrow we should bring the boss. Nah. <laughs> Growing up, I didn't get all the breaks, you know. So I decided I was too cool. For my family, my friends, especially for school. And one day, old Mr. Hopkins, the math teacher, just shows up on my front porch. He says, uh, son, you can go on feeling sorry for yourself all your life. Just don't expect the rest of the world to join you. For some reason, I followed him back to school. And you know what? I never left. Ashland Oil believes teachers change lives. Napoleon Bonaparte, a self-proclaimed emperor, a soldier, a man with an odd habit of keeping his hand in his vest. Was it just a quirk? Or was he hiding something? It's been a mystery until today. One taste and you're stuck on Golden Flame forever. Over $1,500,000 in escort rebates in this area alone. That makes this the biggest Ford Escort sellout ever. We've got over 1,500 new escorts in stock. And all come with a $1,000 rebate or 6.9 financing plus a 750 rebate. Get a four-door with a $1,000 rebate or 6.9 plus a 750 rebate. Same goes for a wagon, even an Escort GT. Choose the $1,000 rebate and get an Escort Pony for just $67.57. But it all ends soon, where quality is standard. Your Ford dealer. A sports communication will capture the memory of the surprising turnaround year in Kentucky basketball as you see the Wildcats trying to beat the Tigers with a new full-color book about Rick Pitino's exciting first year as a Wildcat coach. To order your advanced copy, send 1495 to Rick Pitino Book, 
P.O. Box 1998, Lexington, 40596. At least for the moment, the Tiger has been flattened. 54-53, Kentucky has come from five down to go ahead and a chance to go out by one more when Hanson goes to the line. I'd like to be, be a fly on a chair in either one of those huddles. I know that uh, the Wildcats have gotten back into this thing with defense, but again, a couple of runouts by Auburn, and one of the reasons being that the Auburn, uh, whoever the player is who takes the pass from the inbounds, man, Ralph, never wastes a moment to the pass. He always knows where he wants to go with the ball, and generally, they can hit somebody in full stride. Junior Braddy comes into the ball game for Kentucky. He checked in for Derek Miller, who's now going back to the scorer's table, but he has to wait until the ball is uh, actually put into play. That's Reggie Hansen at the line. Hanson with one, trying to get three the hard way, as Kaywood calls it. <laughs> Hanson coming up with 15. 55-53, Kentucky by two, and it's been a long time since Kentucky led in this ballgame. Last time was when he led it 23-21. 55-53, Dennison with it for Auburn. 17-18. Gallant, a battle rather, and he charged. Battle draws his second foul. Second foul called, the third foul called against Auburn in this half. Miller checking back in for Junior Braddy. Auburn did a good job working the ball around the perimeter, and Battle did a, an excellent job getting inside the zone. He just took it a step too far. Hanson to Pelfrey. Brant's really done a good job on keeping the ball out of Reggie's hands. Ball was kicked by Kaler. He tried to force the pass up. But again, Feldhaus looking for that backdoor cut. The Wildcats trying to get those high percentage shots, and so far so good in terms of shooting percentage. Both teams still shooting well, but Kentucky has not gotten as many backdoor layups as it has against some of the other SEC teams. Miller for three. 14 for deep. 58 53. Kentucky led by eight in the first half. They lead by five now. Kaler. Dennison. Kentucky on the rebound as Derek Miller pulls it in. That'll be four rebounds for Derek. Pelfrey. Feldhaus. Good move and a whistle. Basket counts and he's fouled. Hanson oh, made bodies all over the floor. Watch the effort by Hanson. I thought he might have been hurt after this. He gets his legs cut out from under him and stays on the floor all the time. Feldhaus has the basketball. Very slow getting up. It kind of scared me for a moment, but uh, Hanson got up with that ever-present smile on his face. Somebody threw something on the floor. Now uh, Feldhaus with a chance for that hard three-point play. Feldhaus throws the line for Kentucky. Darren Feldhaus will get one. He has ten points. His first free throws in this game. He gets his own rebound, and I thought they got him again, but obviously not. Ball will go to Kentucky. The Cats have gotten back into this one and taken a seven-point lead with defense and rebounding. 16-15 to go. Kentucky by seven points. Miller walked. Cut that ball back on his hip as you saw it. Yep. Eric Ele Dennison trying to stay with him. 11 turnovers for Kentucky. The press will come from Kentucky again. Gallon. Gets his third field goal. 
60-55. Kentucky now by five. Woods, the leading assist man in the league. 17 for Derek Miller. 63-55. Now the crowd's with him. This equals Kentucky's biggest lead. Miller's 4-4 four four in this half. draws his first foul. We've seen that all year. Feldhaus sneaking up as a high post as Kaler stepped out to take the pass. Almost got it cleanly. Take a look. The double team now, Gallon, with almost a blind pass, and Feldhaus caught him on the wrist. That was only the first team foul in this second half for the Wildcats. We played almost five minutes. Kentucky by eight, equaling their biggest lead. Out of bounds. Is Auburn will get it back. Woods kicking it. Brasso checks back in for Kentucky. Gave the Cats a good offensive lift off the bench in the first half, Ralph, with 10 points. And Feldhouse gets a breather. A little conversation going on between Clockerty and Pelfrey as he gets put the ball in. And we've got another foul on Sean Woods. Zane Arnold went ahead and followed with a shot and put it in. It'll be out of bounds. That'll be four fouls on Sean. And here comes Richie. Richie Farmer coming into the game, as you pointed out, Dick. Sean Woods out with four fouls. Seemed like Woods was just getting into the flow of the game, too. Let's see if Farmer can start off hot. Auburn's slowing it down a little bit now. This half-court offense when they put the ball in. They've had two occasions to put it in bounds on the half-court since Kentucky's had the ball back. Here's Dennison against Brasso, who's into the game. He's in replacing Feldhaus. Taylor, Taylor juggling it, getting it back, and making it. John Taylor has eight points. 63-57. Derek Miller, a quick three-point shot. Hanson on the rebound. Out to Farmer for three. <laughs> Biggest lead of the night on there for Kentucky. And here comes an Auburn run out. Dennison. Walk. It'll be out of bounds, Kentucky. He had the ball, Ralph, and stepped out of bounds. You cannot step back in and touch the ball until one of your teammates touches it. Well, there's time out of the floor, as the Wildcats call it. Coach Patino wants to settle down this ball club just a little bit. 14-10 left. Kentucky leads it 66-57. So your Ford F-150 has more standard power than the Chevy? Yeah. And more torque for towing? Right. And your Ford with an automatic and a V-8 costs less than a Chevy automatic and a V-6? It's true. And those aren't the reasons you bought the Ford? No. F-150, where quality is standard. Your Ford dealer. So why did you? Well, after the rain stops, you can almost hear your Chevy rust in the <laughs> Tradition, it's an important part of success. It sets a standard. It gives us a foundation for the future. Great Financial Federal is coming up on its 75th anniversary and is completing its most successful year ever. For nearly 75 years, Great Financial Federal has been building a tradition, one of integrity, sound judgment, strength, and service. It's a tradition generations of Kentuckians have come to trust. A tradition of financial security, Great Financial Federal. Confidence is a big part of succeeding in business today. And as Eastern Kentucky supplier of quality Caterpillar equipment and service, Wayne Supply has built a reputation on the confidence of our customers. Confidence in knowing we'll come through with just the right equipment for the right job, big or small. And confidence in knowing that everything Wayne sells is backed by the best and most complete parts and service support to keep you on the job with less downtime. Whatever your needs in Eastern Kentucky, contact your nearest Wayne Supply branch. Wayne Supplies Confidence. Get ahead in the rat race with Johnson Industries' newest and most powerful personnel carrier, the Mine Rat. The Mine Rat features a hydrostatically operated drivetrain. 
In low gear, it's a mighty mouse of a pack rat, capable of pulling man trips or supplies long distances. Shifting into high gear sends the rat from scamper to boogie, giving you a high-speed tunnel rat. The rat is equipped with a large-capacity battery pack for long running time. Most of all, you won't need much cheese to trap this rat. Every Thursday night, you can hear and talk with Coach Rick Pitino and Kay Woodletford on the big blue line of the University of Kentucky Radio Network. Check your local listings for the stations. It's at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Call toll free. Not only is it senior day for Kentucky's Derek Miller, but there's another man who's followed the Wildcats for a few years who's going to be leaving it. That's the beat writer for the Courier-Journal, Scott Fowler. Scott, you've been uh, covering the Wildcats for a couple of years. I know you've traveled you. Things about this place more, most, more than anything the way Rupp Arena is on a day like this when every 24,000 people are here and cheering and it's just a real nice thing in college uh, basketball you're going to the Miami Herald we want to wish you good luck well I appreciate that I'll be back here every now and then because I'll be covering the University of Florida so I'll see you all right Scott Fowler for the Courier Journal Scott finished second by the way in the three-point shoot-off to win a scholarship for the fantasy camp of Coach Patino and Sam Newton. He was beaten out by our own Tom Giffen, photographer for Channel 27 Sports. There you go, Giff. 17 for Reggie. 68-57. Kentucky's biggest lead is Brasso saves it. Boy, he looked like a defensive back. Not bad for a guy from Texas. They play a little football down there. But look at the effort he has to make just to get back and deflect that ball. Otherwise, Dennison has an easy two. 68-57, Kentucky Gallon to Kaler, and Kaler gets it. Make that 12 points for John Kaler. Gallon is so quick. Now, we got a technical foul assessed on the crowd. Please point to the person. Please point to the person that's throwing it out. That's Rick Pitino on the mic. Please point. What they're doing is they're asking to point to the person. Coach Patino has asked him to point to the person if, who's if in the upper deck. Here's point to that person who's not from Kentucky, we can have him leave. There have been three or four, get that person up top, three or four paper up airplanes top. that have been thrown out of the uh, stands, and you see them there. They're pointing to the guy. I mean, for his sake, I hope he's the guilty one. Yeah. <laughs> They have assessed a technical foul. It'll be two shots. Dennison misses it. And the reason they slapped the tee is because the crowd already had been warned once before. John Clarity quickly called the tee. And it was the right thing to do. Right. There they are. There goes the, the guilty couple. Or at least that's what the hundreds of people are pointing to. Jury of their peers. <laughs> Fair. That's not a bad toss from up there with an airplane. 68 to 60. 1331 to go. Tripping foul. It's going to be on uh, Feldhaus. Well, he's shaking up on it. Yeah, I think Arnold fell on him. Boy, he's a tough young man. His second team. Oh, caught a knee to the old bread basket. That'll be two on Darren. You catch him with an elbow, too, in the head? <laughs> he, he took a pretty good beating on him. <laughs> he <that>. did. <laughs> 1329. Derek's Darren's still feeling it. Dennison getting it inbound. Dennison, as Auburn makes a run at Kentucky now. Knocked away out of bounds, and Richie Farmer is guilty of the first one. Well, that momentum swing when they call the technical foul and stopping the play has certainly had an effect on the Wildcats. Absolutely. It had an effect on the crowd. Quieted the crowd a little bit. Farmer trying to make something happen. Patino says he needs his guards to rebound. Richie Farmer knocked it off the leg of Dennison. You know, in a staff meeting the other day, Patino and his coaches were talking about, and actually he told the media too, Farmer anticipates on the inbounds play almost as well as anyone on the court. Richie Farmer. The Feldhaus and Feldhaus gets it. 12 points for Darren. Great job protecting the ball. Went up with a left hand. Otherwise, Kaler would have had it. Grasso is already back and set to defend Dennison. 
Kentucky by 10. We've got 12.53 to go. Arnold getting loose, but not for long, and Kentucky draws the foul. Feldhaus is the man who got him, his and third. Brasso and Feldhaus dropped down to help him. He had gone for the steal. But Brasso can't give you an experience. He more than makes up for in hustle, Ralph, and that's what he's done with Dennison here in the second half. Arnold is up at the line for two tries. Zane Arnold. Arnold, not normally a good free throw shooter, is perfect from there this ball game. He's three of three. Tommy Joe Eagles. Seventy sixty two. Auburn back to within eight. Richie Farmer. Miller. 20 points for the deep. Richie Farmer got him. Farmer called for the foul, but I tell you what, Ralph, I don't think he ever worked so hard on an assist as he did on that play for Miller. Well, watch him bump Gallon here. That was pretty much being a no call, really, but yeah. But it's 73-62 in Auburn's ball after Kentucky's foul. Richie's second. There, there was no harm. 12-25 to go. John Taylor. Boy, he's played hard today. The entire Auburn team has. Turnover Auburn. That will be 18 turnovers for the Tigers. Kentucky has committed 11. Kentucky has been a ball club all year long that has forced the opposition into a lot of turnovers. Farmer is fouled. John Taylor did it. Well, that is 16 fouls against Auburn and Tommy Joe Eagle says, I can't believe it. It happened right in front of us. It was a good call. Watch Taylor reach in as Farmer moves away from Gallon on the spin. They're very haxing. That's but pretty much of a no call, too. Well, they did knock the ball away. They had to call something. This is Miller. One on one with Dennison. He's going to fire. We knew that. He made that move out there. Battle against Brasso. Dennison. Arnold. Dennison. Hansen on the rebound. Reggie Hansen in the ball game has now pulled down nine rebounds. John Taylor with the ball. Gallon has 10, 73-64, Kentucky. Miller, good move. Started for his first touch. But Hanson gets the ball and gets his 19th point. He's playing on the end now where his mama's sitting. Right. 75-64, Kentucky. 11.04 to go. Dennison, good one-on-one -on -one move. It will go to Auburn. The exchange possession arrow gives it to Auburn. Great block, second block of the day for Reggie. Very active on both ends of the court. Now watch him go straight up. Doesn't reach for the ball. John Pelfrey back in the game for the Wildcats. And here comes Jonathan Davis to give Reggie Hansen a bit of a rest. Jonathan Davis, just a tremendous player in the blue-white games. And also, Tony Cooper's into the game. Davis, get... Davis has been struggling, though. Taylor. Knocked away. Kentucky had Miller and Davis going at it. Good hustle. Auburn getting it back. Gallon. Cooper. Cooper did not give him enough room to come down. Tony Cooper, a walk-on. All three of the walk-ons have played today for Kentucky. That's good to see, too. And, and Parks with a big rebound at the end of the half as Auburn was pounding the boards trying to get an extra bucket out of the final second. Gallon Parks came in, coming up with a big rebound. I'd like to see how Cooper handles Gallon next time down. Gallon so quick. Cooper may be the quickest player on the team. will get the bonus. And Kentucky will get Hanson back into the ballgame, replacing Jonathan Davis. 
it seems like just moments ago that Auburn had five team fouls. Kentucky had one. It is now seven to six in team fouls for this half. Kentucky having the seven as Gallon gets his 12 point. Auburn's going to come with a little press of their own. Don Bergeson found something there on the court. They take it out and the ball boys go for it. <laughs> Must be money. Yeah. <laughs> Cooper. Rasso for three. Lyncher and Gallon. Auburn running like they did in the first half when they were behind. This is Arnold. And they're scoring like they did in the first half. That's eight now for Arnold. The swing, since that technical foul, has definitely swung over to Auburn. Absolutely. Hanson. That slowed the game down, Ralph. Cooper was wide open and didn't get it to it. This is Pelfrey. Good move by John, and it won't go. I think Hanson. No, they give it to Pelfrey. The official score, Ken Brandenburg says. That's a reward for the great effort. 77-68. Nine-point lead. Zane Arnold. They get him in a trap out there. And can, well, thought Kentucky had it. Battle with it. I'll tell you another guy who I think anticipates the ball well and out of a trap happens to be Brasso. Yes, sir. Taylor partially blocked by Hanson. He and Pelfrey were both in there. Reggie commits the foul. Yeah, Not seven. Ferguson motion that he got him with the body. Let's see if he got him with that shoulder. I don't know. Looks like some space between Hanson and Taylor there. Patino was complaining earlier this week, or not really a complaint, but just admitting that they really don't have a great low post defender. Hanson doing the very best he can, but helps on the way. Taylor. 13. Tommy Joe Eagle is talking to Chris Brant. You know, and you haven't said Brant's name much this half, Ralph. Kentucky's done a nice job of taking him out of this ball game in the second half, as well as Ronnie Bauer. Brant coming out of the game. Arnold goes up. 77-70. Size for size there. They don't lose a thing. Little quickness, though. Miller over Wrencher. Pelfrey. Cooper is in the ball game, of course, for Kentucky. You know, these walk-ons have been in today in pressure situations for Kentucky. What move by Belknap. He just took Taylor completely out of it and gets his 14th point. Very quietly going about his job. He also has five rebounds to go along with his 14 points. That's Battle. Battle's first points in this half. He has 21 for the game. Nine minutes left. Cooper. Miller. Taylor coming off. Or Taylor coming off with it. Auburn can cut it to five. They trail by as many as 12. Good defensive job by Miller cutting him off. Auburn working the clock, Ralph. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Gallon. Kentucky man to man. Taylor down against Feldhouse and he charged. They've taken the shot clock to 10. John Taylor's third foul. Now that's a big turnover for Auburn. Let's take another look at it. Cooper right in Gallon's face. And Taylor again lowers his shoulder into Darren Feldhouse. The key is, can Kentucky take advantage as Taylor gets the bench with three fouls in favor of Arnold? So that puts Arnold and Brandt back on the front line for the Tigers. Kentucky's committed three more fouls and has Auburn 23 for the Cats. Darren Feldhouse. Kentucky by seven points and 8-10 to go. Hanson, he's fouled. It was Arnold that got him. That'll be the eighth foul in Auburn and a half, so it's one in a bonus at least. It is, one in a bonus. All night, Arnold has tried to deny Hanson that pass. Apparently, Tommy Joe Eagles does not want Hanson posting up on Arnold down there. Arnold, a good defensive player, but they tried to deny him that by fronting it. In the last couple of three times, Hanson has ended up on the free throw line, as we see Derek Dennison back in after a rest, and there goes Gallon. Five fouls on Zane Arnold. 
Sean Woods back in the game. Go to the line. He'll shoot one of the bonus. Reggie Hansen getting his 20th point. Yeah, you were talking about Darren Feldhouse what? being so consistent. And in the last three games, he's averaged 20 points. We said that about Hansen all year, about John Pelfrey up until recently. And he this finally one. missed one. Yeah. But Reggie, I think you're probably saying Reggie's played steady for most of the year. Had a little slack in the middle of the season, but he's come back for 80-72. Under eight minutes to go. Arnold on the rebound over Hanson. Arnold really going to war. Good one on one, gets him 10. To a six-point game now, Kentucky on top. They had a foul out on the floor. The foul is going to be on Ronnie Battle, his third. His third. Brand happened to be the right man at the right moment. Three fouls on Ronnie. You know, at the rate this game is going, Ralph, this crowd really hasn't been able to unleash itself on Auburn. They may have to save it for the award ceremony. Yeah, that's right. 18.7 rebounds against Tennessee the other night in Knoxville. for John Pumphrey is his 11th point of this game. He's perfect at the line on three of three. Started every ball game for Kentucky Dick with the exception of the one when he had the flu and still played a lot. Oh, played a great 82-74, Kentucky back by eight. Battle. Dennison, now Brandt. Wrencher. Arnold, and he's fouled by Pelfrey. Or Feldhaus, his fourth. With a fourth foul on Darren, we'll take a break. 7.21 to go. Kentucky leads it by eight here in Rupp Arena. Here's the last stop on our tour. The Fountain of Youth. This one's on me. Cold bud, man. I love this job. When the Rutledge family needs auto, home, life, or health insurance, they see me. I'm their State Farm agent, Billy King. They keep seeing me as I help them keep their coverages up to date with our State Farm family insurance checkups. When they have a claim, they see me. And thanks to our checkups, the protection has been there. If you want to see a family insurance agent working for you, see a State Farm agent. And like a good neighbor, State yeah. Farm is there. There's a lot to be said for owning a wood stove. You get to buy a lot of neat gear. Enjoy the outdoors. Get exercise. Meet interesting people. Get fresh air. Study thermal dynamics. And all you can say about electric thermal storage is it's clean, comfortable, convenient, and the power is available at up to a 40% discount from your participating rural electric co-op. About this electric thermal storage. Yeah. There's a motor oil that talks about quality. Always has, always will. Well, Valvoline makes the highest quality motor oil recommended by any automobile manufacturer. Oh yeah, unlike the competition, Valvoline also makes the motor oil used by 7 out of 10 Indy 500 crew chiefs. That's 7 out of 10 Indy crew chiefs over the last 10 years. People who know, use Valvoline. At the free throw line is Zane Arnold. Kentucky has Feldhaus with four, Pelfrey with four, Woods has four, three, Joan Miller and on Brasso. And at the line is Zane Arnold, who has five fouls on him for Robert. Of course, in the Southeastern Conference this year, you're going to have six fouls. Not surprising that the fouls are piling up for Kentucky because I think the Wildcats have stepped up their defensive pressure notch and hit the boards hard. That's the first free throw that Arnold has missed. Bad pass there by the leading assist man of the Southeastern Conference, Sean Woods. Gallon. 
Dennison tapping it out. Woods with it. Run into trouble. Dennison. Arnold has 13 points. 82-77. Five-point game. John Woods to Hanson. He hit a three-pointer early, early in the game. Whistle underneath, and we've got a foul. It's going to be on Auburn. It's going to be on Brand, I think, for holding. Foul is on Brand. Take a look as Feldhouse comes through. Oh, no, no doubt about that one. But again, Kentucky trying to isolate Shake Loose for the backdoor cuts. Auburn just plain doesn't want to give up that backdoor cut, Ralph, no matter what. That's right. Four fouls on Chris Brandt. And Darren Feldhaus will go to the line. He must feel like a punching bag today after taking that knee to the midsection from Arnold and Brand almost tore his arm off. Cleanly, though. That'll be 15 points for Darren Feldhaus. Been a starter every ball game this year for Kentucky. Second of the team in rebounding and third in scoring of the season. He has 16 points. 84-77, Kentucky back by seven. Dennison. This is Gallon. Grant breaking loose to come up with his eighth point. 84-79, six and a half left. Woods, good second effort. Explosive step gets his fifth point and puts Kentucky back by seven. And the next time he does that, someone will be open for a jumper. Feldhouse knocking it down. Auburn will get it back. Tom and Joe Eagle says, let's go, guys. John Taylor gets back into the game for Auburn. Sort of the Darren Feldhouse of the Auburn team, John Taylor. They rather mirror one another, don't they? 6'6", so 230 for Kaler. 6'7", 210 for Feldhaus. Grant. What happened? He went up, lost the ball, and came down with it. He was saying he was hit. Now, John Clogarty is saying the ball was hit. I think Clogarty is saying the ball was tipped on the way up. It wasn't a conventional block over the top, and Fogarty right here in front of us never hesitated. This is Gallo, Gallon. I know Auburn wants a timeout. Timeout Auburn, 6.02 to go, 86-79. The Wildcats lead. 27 seconds left on the shot clock. Auburn will put it in play. Mountain Ford wants to be your dealer. To accomplish that, we know that we have to offer the very best in sales, parts, and service. We intend to do just that. You just can't beat a Mountain Ford deal, and we prove it every day with specials like this. 89 Escorts, only $79.95. 89 Tempos, only $84.95. 89 Tauruses, only $10.995. And 89 Lincoln Town Cars, only $18,995. Mountain Ford Lincoln Mercury, Daniel Boone Parkway, Hazard, Kentucky. When is a great time to stop by the Happy Mart Deli? Anytime. For great breakfast biscuits, delicious deli sandwiches, or fantastic hamburgers, there's crispy fried chicken, and don't forget hot dogs every day, too, for 99 cents. Whether it's lunch on the run or a complete dinner, make it Happy Mart. And remember, now you can get a free car wash with an 8-gallon fill-up from any one of our five convenient car wash locations. Happy Mart, taking care of you. Minix One Hour Optical is now open in the Glenview Shopping Center in Prestonsburg, where most eyeglasses are made in about an hour. A large selection of frames are available, including Christian Dior, Carrera, and Liz Claiborne. Their in-store laboratory makes it possible for them to become your local one-stop, one-hour family optical shop. From invisible bifocals to disposable contact lenses, let Minix One Hour Optical handle all of your eye care needs. Minix One Hour Optical, Euclid Avenue, Paintsville, and Glenview Shopping Center, Prestonsburg. Every day, we make a decision of where to buy gasoline. 
Happy Mart would like to thank you for making them the number one choice. So each time you get a fill-up of eight gallons or more, you'll receive a free Happy Mart car wash from the South Mayo Trail location, the Plaza location, the Green Meadows Happy Mart, the Mita location, and the new Twin Bay car wash at South Williamson. So after you fill up, be sure to get your free wash from any one of our five convenient car wash locations. Happy Mart, taking care of you. The Rick Patino poster could be yours, or you could give it for a special gift. What do you think so far? The perfect souvenir of Rick Patino's amazing first season for the Wildcats. Send five dollars to Patino poster, 904 North Broadway, Lexington, 40505. Coming up following this telecast will be the awards presentation. Coach Patino had said he wanted to do something for the fans so they could see it rather than have an awards dinner. That's exactly what we'll have over most of these same stations. Simply the best. There's Rick Patino. That sign saying stand up is directed across to the group behind us. <laughs> 86 79. Each team hitting 50% of the second half. Gallon for three. Rat on the rebound. Out of bounds, Auburn. And again, two shots at the basket for Auburn. And another deflection for Hanson. Auburn to get it back. They're going to have to send somebody to put the ball in. Battle against Feldhaus. Dennison. This is Battle. He's had a real good ball game. 23 points for him, but only four in this half. He just lit up the scoreboard that first half. And now he brings Auburn back to it in five. And Auburn back in a man-to-man. Sean Woods. 5-12 to go in the game. Kentucky was a favorite. Taylor just fouled Hanson. Four fouls on John Taylor. Taylor is four. Out of Talbot, Tennessee. Reggie Hansen back to the line. Nine out of 11 from the free throw line today. He's Kentucky's leading scorer on the day with 21 points. Who would have thought that everyone would be, I mean, players, crowd, coaches, so intense for the Auburn-Kentucky game at the end of this season? It's amazing, isn't it? 22 points for Reggie Hanson. And now the whistle blew, and John Clockety checking something. Out of bounds, Kentucky, out of bounds to Auburn. Sounded like the buzzer went off, but Charlie Watts said nope. There may never be another season like this, the University of Kentucky. Next so. year, they go back to live television. Missed for five for three, and a push on out foul. Going to be on Pelfer, his fifth foul. But people did not expect anything out of this ball club. It's they almost come out, and they've won 13 ball games so far, and they have just lifted everybody's heart up. You can see Pelfrey with the elbow and Taylor's back. year because really the crowd hasn't expected anything but what it has received from the players is just about everything. Taylor back at the line. And Kentucky on the rebound. Four minutes, 54 seconds to go. Pelfrey with it. And he charged. He's out of here. John Pelfrey fouls out of the ball game. That's 12. I had him with I had him with six. Obviously, that's just five. He stays in. Brasso's going to come in. Belfry goes out. Well, he's out one way or the other. 
Basso coming in and squaring off with Derek Dennison. That's his man. Let's we'll see if Kentucky stays in a man-to-man. -man. A little under five minutes left. slowing the pace down. They've been like a yo-yo. They've gone with one speed and slow it back down and come back again at you real hard when they get you lackadaisical. That one's knocked away by Miller. Derrick's been styled and scoring for a long time after he got his 20th point. Taylor wide open. Bellhouse committing the foul. That will be five fouls on Darren. So the two starting forwards of Kentucky have five apiece. Now watch Kaler under the basket. He is strong, but Feldhouse does a nice job. Of it. He knows he's going to foul him. Tries to stop him from getting that ball in the basket. It almost went, but if you're going to make that foul, you've got to make sure that ball doesn't go in to give you that chance for three. Kaler five out of seven from the free throw line. John has 16 points after making that one. It means something to every team in the conference to play against Kentucky, but Kaler being from Tennessee talks about that shot he hit to beat Kentucky. He said, that's the biggest moment of my life. 17, and he brings him to within four. He may have that try again here in this ball game. Feldhouse with it to Miller. Auburn certainly has not let this Kentucky crowd intimidate him. Well, you mentioned a couple of times, Rob, the technical foul and some other things have really slowed the game down. Rasso, the Feldhouse. Keep your eye on Peter and how he handles Feldhouse. This is Woods. Hanson against Brandt. Kentucky now using clock. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Woods with it. Woods, they open it up, and he goes. It is no good. Tapped up, no good. John Taylor coming down with a rebound. John put a good ball game there also. He has nine rebounds. Heads off with another partner. Auburn can come to within two. Ricky Gallon to Taylor. He'll go to the free throw line again. Reggie Hanson, I think, is the guilty party. That'll be three on him if it is. And it is. And we'll see John Pelfrey check back in, but Rick Patino wants to talk to his team. It's a timeout. 3.15 to go. Kentucky 88. Auburn 84. They can come within two from the free throw line. A friend recently asked, why should I consider a demonstrator instead of a car with no mileage? Well, obviously the reason is price. In return for limited use, usually 6,000 miles or less, we give a generous price concession to the buyer, as well as top dollar for your trade-in, and Mountain Ford always has an excellent selection of demos ready for delivery. That's Mountain Ford Lincoln Mercury, Daniel Boone Parkway, Hazard, Kentucky. Commonwealth Equipment, your authorized John Deere industrial equipment dealer, servicing the needs of the coal industry, the timber industry, and the area's contractors. Dozers, backhoes, excavators, and other heavy equipment can be found at Commonwealth Equipment's locations in Pikeville, Hindman, Middle Creek, and Kermit, West Virginia. For equipment, service, parts, and rentals, call Commonwealth Equipment, your John Deere dealer. Hi. It's me, Andrea. Can I have a cold? If it weren't for Mayo Drugstores, I'd never get through it. They filled my prescription and answered my questions. I like a pharmacist who cares. Mayo Drugstores has everything to make you feel good and look great. I even did a little shopping. Well, I'm sick, not dead. They even had my color nail polish. So when you go by, tell them Andrea sent you. And tell them that I'm feeling much better. Oh, and see if they have any more of those chocolate candies. Not too long ago, we asked you folks what you wanted most from your bank. And guess what you told us? It wasn't better checking accounts or savings or loans. It wasn't credit cards or IRAs either. It was better quality service. You told us that you're the customer. And after all, who's more important? You know what? You're right. You are more important. And that's why we treat you like you like to be treated 
at First Commonwealth Bank. Four point ball game and Kentucky leads. So they have some people in foul trouble with Darren Feldhaus having five, John Pelfrey having five, and Sean Woods having four. You can add to that the fact that Reggie has three, Derek Miller has three, and Jeff Brasso has three. Last home game of the year for the Wildcats. They go on the road to play Ole Miss down at Oxford on Wednesday night. Kaywood Lefford and I will have that of the University of Kentucky Radio Network. There will be no television of any kind on that ball game. John Kaler having the kind of night that everybody dreams of having against the Wildcats of Kentucky. He did not start today. He's their sixth man. He has 17 points. That equals his high of the year when he had 17 against Florida State. He had 14 rebounds in that game. He has a total of nine rebounds to go along with his 17 in this one. In his last five games, Kaler 20 of 23 from the floor. 17 of 19 from the free throw line. He averaged almost 12 points per game here in the last five games. So it's almost uh, as though you could expect something good from him tonight. You see that Kentucky still with three timeouts. Here's something for their sake that the Wildcats don't need. To. John Kaler at the line. Great human interest comeback story after having that blood clot and thinking he would never play again. What was scary about that blood clot is it took so long to figure out what it was. He just said he felt bad and the doctors finally found it. He is now 8 out of 11 from the free throw line and Auburn has taken 36 free throws. They've hit 26 of them in the game and we're playing in Rupp Arena. And in Auburn, they took 20 to the Tigers. The Cats took nine. Kentucky's taken 27 free throws today, and they've hit on 22 of them. Under three minutes to go, and Kentucky holding on by three. They definitely need a bucket down here. Derek Miller, the Woods, good man to man for Auburn. Kentucky killing clock in 10 seconds on the shot clock. Hanson against Kaler, one-on-one. -on -one. Good move by Reggie. Reggie getting 24. 90-85, Kentucky. Gallup. Gallon commits the foul. But credit Derek Miller for making this possible. Miller knocked it away at the other end. He is playing a complete game. Now watch, there's the back tip cleanly. A complete game in his final home court appearance, and Sean Woods heads for the free throw line. And Sean going up there with five points to his credit. He's one of two from the free throw line. He'll shoot one of the bonus. Those are big misses. Woods with it. Bellhouse. He got it. And he's fouled. And calls a timeout. Rick Patino will talk to his ball club. They put the ice, or at least are trying to, on Darren Bellhouse. Will go to the line. He has 18 points. That's the Student Athletic Council, at the University of Kentucky. Rodney Styles coordinates the group, and they've done a wonderful job of moving him down in the lower arena, helping to build a little fighting spirit. We'll have one more televised ball game with the University of Kentucky Network, and that'll come to you from South Bend, Indiana. And the Wildcats take on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. March 5th, check your local listings for the delayed broadcast time and station.
games that have as much enthusiasm as this season has had, but there probably will never be a season that is as enthusiastic as this one. Two eighty-five, two fifteen to go. Denison for three. three point That'll get you back in a hurry. You bet. Denison has fourteen points. Four-point game once again. Auburn extending its pressure. Woods. Miller. One of the things Kentucky did not do early on of the year, like Indiana. Like at Auburn earlier. Like Southwestern Louisiana. Was play smart basketball late in the game when they had the lead. Too many quick shots. We haven't seen that today. Good move. Just couldn't get it to fall. Woods with it in a minute 30 left. The foul will be on Auburn and Woods will go to the line. Woods has been to the line three times. He's hit one. The last time he was there, he missed the front end of one and a bonus. Sean Woods told me yesterday, they owe me something. He said, I think, I feel like Auburn owes me because it was his bad pass that was intercepted in the crucial stages of the game down there in Auburn. Nobody wants to win here today more than Sean Woods, not even Derek Miller. That was Battle's fourth foul. Well, he still can't get one to fall. 22 of 30 from the free throw line. This game is far from being over. Battle gets his 25th point. 92-90. 1 11 to go. Kentucky wants a timeout. Well, Kentucky's been unable, Dick Gabriel, to hit it from the free throw line, as they have missed the last three times they have been up there. The back end of a three-point try, and then two front ends of one and a bonus. Well, just before that great ovation, Kentucky seemed to have the game in hand with Derek or Darren Feldhouse at the line looking to complete that three-point play. And it makes you go back again to that first game where the Wildcats began to celebrate too soon. I don't think that happened here. But again, Kentucky had that game in its grasp, and it slipped away. Still a lot of basketball to be played here today, but as you say, the Wildcats worked so hard at putting themselves in position to win the ball game. Now, who knows? This is a sophomore laden team for the Kentucky Wildcats. Alfred Davis and Feldhouse, along with Richie Farmer, Sean Woods. And here is what the sophomore squad has done. They've averaged 46 points, 18 and a half rebounds a game, stolen the ball 156 times, and 334 assists. That's not bad. Makes you wonder what this team's going to be like when it's finally back in the NCAA tournament in a couple of years with what Rick Pitino really likes, a senior-dominated team. I guess every coach likes that. He gave himself a three-year plan, and he said in three years he's going to be back up and fighting for the national championship. That's when this group is going to be seniors. Right. Bringing in a couple of good horses, maybe three good horses. But play. as you say, Ralph, nothing will compare with what happened this season. Almost a season, as I said, almost a season of innocence. And nobody expected anything. But the players just gave everything they had. And it's, it's kind of fun, really, when at the end of a game, even a loss, as I say, after the Tennessee game, you shrug and say, what a great game. Well, there's another timeout called by Kentucky. They call two in a row. And Rob Bromley has a pleasant task now. Robert? I've got uh, Trisha Wood here, one of the U.K. cheerleaders. This has been a great place to be this season, hasn't it, Trisha? It has been. It's been a wonderful year for me. It's my final year, and I'm so excited about cheering. Yeah, a fantastic crowd. Yes, it is. It's wonderful. It's the best ever. I think Kentucky has such a great reputation of having an outstanding cheerleading squad, and that has been held up this season, hasn't it? Tell us about it. We've done really well. We've really worked our out with the crowd, getting them motivated, getting the, play, get the fans up to motivate the team. We're going again with Nationals this year, and hopefully we'll come back with the National Championships. All right. Where are the Nationals going to be held, and when is it? They'll be held in San Antonio, Texas, April 7th. All right. Well, that's not too far away, just a little over a month. <laughs> not at all. We're really excited about it. We feel like we're going to... We've got the capability and the potential to win this year. All right, Tricia, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks a lot. Tricia Wood, Ralph. Thank you, Rob Bromley. This is Ralph Hacker along with Dick Gabriel and Rob Bromley this afternoon here in Rupp Arena. Jim Masters away on assignment of the Southeastern Conference. They'll be rejoining us up at Notre Dame. 
congratulations to a former lady cat, Lee Wise. Living in Mount Sterling now, just gave birth to a baby girl, six pounds, eight ounces, named Maggie. Lee and her husband, Omar Pruitt. Congratulations to both. Everybody's fine. Richie Farmer is into the ball game for Kentucky. Pelfrey, a minute to go. Kentucky holding on by two. Hanson. 22 seconds on the shot clock. The game clock shows you the screen. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Reggie pushing foul underneath on battle. Now well, the table set again, Ralph. Free throws there for the taking as Sean Woods will check back in. Patino does a bit of platooning now. He puts him in for Richie Farmer. The good free throw shooter heads for the bench. The better defensive player comes back in. John Pelfrey can give the Wildcats a little bit of breathing room with 36 seconds left. That looks short. That looks short to me. Did it look short to you? It did. <laughs> There's Bill Kuyper, Mr. Wildcat, just behind Coach Patino. Fourteen for John. Kentucky by four. Basket will count. He'll go to the line for the tie. What a shot. What an absolute shot. For Auburn. Does that remind you of anybody coming in here in a gold jersey a week or two ago? Indeed it does. Chris Jackson? Indeed it does. Fortunately for Kentucky, Jackson never hit. Well, I take that back. He hit, but they didn't hit him. Battle with a chance for the four-point play and a tie. Farmer is in. Miller is out. on Taylor. Feldhaus will go to the line. John Taylor has played himself a pretty good ball game. Arnold gets the instructions from Tommy Joe Eagle. Darren Bellhouse to the line. A lot of basketball left. 25 seconds. by three and the steal they only give it no they give him three Helfer. time out Auburn three seconds to go They're trying to determine whether or not it was a two-point shot or a three-point shot a moment ago. They put three on the boards, and Rick Pitino is signaling that he did not take that kind of shot. Well, the official scorer twice has come up with a number two in his left hand. Let's Let, take another look. Let's look at it and see where he went from. 
It was three. Yep. It was three. Now they take it off. They take it off. Make it 98-95. The replay shows it was a three-pointer. Apparently the officials did not signal three, according to our statistician. Boy, Tommy Joe Eagles won't like that. No, sir. They'll send this tape into the SEC office. He's not out of the game yet, though. No, he's not. He's a three-point shot away now. 98-95. Three seconds to go. Now, in the past, you automatically say foul him on any attempt. But remember in the SEC this year, three free throws. If you foul a shooter attempting a three. They've gone up to the official scorer's table. I guess they have the option. I'm not certain uh, whether they would have the option to come and look at the replay again. Maybe, Mike, you could run that back for us again. if you, Mike Canterac, who's the producer. There it is. I mean, it's a three all the way. There's no doubt about that one. The score is on the board at 98 to 95. It should be, by all reality, 98-96. The official word now is the person operating the scoreboard made the error. As Ralph says, on our videotape, it sure looks like a three. But if you're going... To signal. That's not Kay Wood Letford in this <laughs> Patino Bombino shirt, by the way. All right, now what do you do? Do you put pressure on the guy putting the ball in bounds? Last time Kentucky did not do this, Tennessee beat him. But now Kentucky calls their last time out. He wanted to see how they came out of that. Auburn has one timeout left. Kentucky has, uh, has run out. Now Tommy Joe Eagles is meeting John Clockerty up at the mid midcourt. And John Ferguson is over and talking to official score also. Tommy is still arguing that particular thing, and he'll run this videotape back in line. All right, let's freeze it again. Here we go. We'll freeze it. You can see his feet outside of the line. They're outside of the line a good two feet. It's tough to see the right foot, but Ralph, he is well behind it. I can't. His feet are only... 10 inches long. I mean, it's just perhaps the officials just weren't up close enough to see it or what, but uh, because battle certainly was moving quickly, and they were running obviously away from uh, two or maybe all three of the officials, but it certainly did look as though Tommy Joe Eagles has something to complain about. Well, these fans don't think so. <laughs> I think we lose a survey here today. Yeah, no doubt about it. Rick Pitino Show, tomorrow night on the University of Kentucky Television Network. Check your local listings. He and Rob Bromley, I'm certain, will talk about this particular incident. It may be the deciding factor on who wins this ballgame. Interesting, though, that the person who raised the original question was Rick Pitino. You saw him at the scorer's table, out of the coaching box, because it's a, a situation that, that call, or allows for him to leave the coaching box. He went up and said, hey, that wasn't a three. He never saw the officials signal a three, but he saw it go up on the scoreboard. It should be, by all reality, 98-96. The official word now is the person operating the scoreboard made the error. As Ralph says, on our videotape, it sure looks like a three. against Notre Dame. And what a ball game it was. It'll be a disputed finish because of that lack of call that was not made on behalf of Auburn. But the final score will stand 98-95. Kentucky fans will say, well, the Wildcats did such a great job on defense. Auburn never got off the shot. And that is true as well. But you know, it's sad that lost in all the controversy was a great move by John Pelfrey under pressure. As we've said before, he was struggling a little bit today as he has over the last couple of games. But in his mind, the score was tied. Pelfrey went down, took his time, hit a tough shot under pressure. It won't go 
down as the game winner, but in my mind it was. Indeed it was. Indeed it was indeed that. When he goes up to the line to sink it. Well, the Wildcats won it, Rob Bromley, and it's excitement enough for the fans here in Rupp Arena. Well, fellas, uh, what a remarkable ending to an incredible home season here at Rupp Arena. The Wildcats go right through the Southeastern Conference schedule, and they... Auburn getting it in. Dennison with it. Two seconds. One. It's history. 98-95. The University of Kentucky Wildcats win this ballgame. For the 26th time, the Wildcats have won the senior night basketball game. Larry Ivey will go off with Rick Pitino. They'll be back for the award ceremony. You'll see that on most of these same UK network stations. Kentucky has now assured itself of at least a 500 season. As they win their 14th game against 12 defeats, they have two more ball games left. That will be, of course, against Ole Miss on Wednesday night and also against Notre Dame. And what a ball game it was. It'll be a disputed finish because of that lack of call that was not made on behalf of Auburn. But the final score will stand 98-95. And Kentucky fans will say, well, the Wildcats did such a great job on defense. Auburn never got off the shot. And that is true as well. But you know, it's sad that lost in all the controversy was a great move by John Pelfrey under pressure. As we said before, he was struggling a little bit today as he had over the last couple of games, but in his mind, the score was tied. Pelfrey went down, took his time, hit a tough shot under pressure. It won't go down as the game winner, but in my mind, it was. Indeed it was. Indeed it was indeed that. When he goes up to the line to sink it. Well, the Wildcats won it, Rob Bromley, and it's excitement enough for the fans here in Rupp Arena. Well, fellas, uh, what a remarkable ending to an incredible home season here at Rupp Arena. The Wildcats go right through the Southeastern Conference schedule, and they do not lose a game here on the home floor. A wild ending to it. Auburn led it by a point at halftime, 47 to 46. And then the Wildcats came out right at the start of the second half and did what they needed to do. They got the crowd back into this ball game. It was in the game right at the very start, but not through the rest of the first half. The Cats put on a run that was started on a lay-in by Derek Miller to pull them to within a point, and then Miller hit three three-pointers along a stretch in about a three or four minute period there. Kentucky went up 73-62 and eventually had a double-digit lead, but it did not last. Auburn came back, cut the lead to five on a number of occasions, and in the closing uh, two minutes, pulled back within two points. Battle appeared to hit a three-pointer as it showed on a replay it was a three-pointer that tied the game at 96 at least it was tied at 96 as John Pelfrey went back down the court he went right to the baseline and there was no doubt in Pelfrey's mind he was going to score and he put it in as he went along the baseline to put the Cats up by two then the uh, point came off the board and the final margin turned out to be 98-95 Wildcats we're looking at the uh, final stats here. Kentucky at 32 of 66. Auburn 32 of 62. Look at the free throws. The Tigers shooting 37. The Wildcats 34. Kentucky 8 of 23 pointers here today. Derek Miller had some big ones in the second half. Auburn just 5 of 13. Auburn winning the battle on the boards by 5. And the Tigers ended up committing 21 turnovers in this game. And that was certainly a factor. The Wildcats committing 14. Well, this is our final telecast in Rupp Arena this year. We will be back with you for one more ball game. That will come to you a week from Monday night from South Bend, Indiana. Simply the best. The UK Basketball Award Show. With your hosts, Ralph Hacker, Kay Wood Ludford, and UK basketball coach Rick Patino. Brought to you in part by Ford and your Kentucky Ford dealer, where you'll like the Ford deal you drive home. By Food Town, we're on your side. By Pepsi and your local Pepsi Cola bottler. By Kentucky Finance, doing things the Kentucky way for over 40 years. By your Heart of Kentucky Chevy dealers. In Kentucky, we drive Chevy. And by University of Kentucky Rob Sports Rob Medicine. Factor in our Wildcat wrap up. Now, here's what we're going to do today. Rather than have a player. Brought to you on WYMT by Andy's Honda Yamaha of Hazard, Cardinal Chevrolet Cadillac Geo, and by First Commonwealth Bank. It's not going to be really loud, so you've got to be rather quiet to hear this because it's being broadcast to like a million people. And we got perhaps the largest crowd who ever see any award ceremony in the world, at least for basketball here. There must be 20,000 people remaining here in Rupp Arena. Kentucky winning senior day game, the final home game of the season for the 26th year in a row. Congratulations, Coach.
on? I don't think this is on. Well, okay. now it's working, I believe. One of what about one of the exciting things about this game? You just want to keep everybody uh, around. For that's the right. Orange. That was a one of the smart things that happened. We when when the guy made that shot there, there was no motion from the officials for a three. And when I saw no motion, I I wondered why Sean went right down past the Pelfrey and he scored. I said, why? We don't need it. He said, Coach, I don't care what the ref said. I saw the line. I pay attention to the line. I see everything. That was a three. And it was a three. It was a three. So he did a smart thing. Um, this was a great game. This was a great game from so many respects. And one of the things that I can appreciate most, we had a goal tonight that we were going to set a deflection record for Derek Miller's in his honor. 40 has been our highest, and, and I have not had a team get higher than 40. Tonight, in the honor of Derek Miller, we had 45 deflections. And that just tells you what an outstanding team and coaching staff that Auburn has to make it that close a game with that type of defense. They deserve a lot of credit. Ready? All right, Coach, uh, are we ready for the awards? Yes, we are. And the first award, Best Free Throw Shooter Award, donated by the UK Athletics Association. The envelope, please. Ralph. This young man, uh, I, I think, has come on, and, and obviously we like to play a little offense, defense as the, as the game goes on because we feel that in the clutch there's nobody in the country going to put that shot down any better than Richie Farmer. You know, how does it, Rich? How does it? Second guy. Tub. The okay, most rebounds. Yeah, this most rebounds donated by First Security National Bank. Most rebounds with 187, 7.2 per game. And boy, is he going to be excited to go from center to small forward. Reggie Hansen. Good job, Reggie. Turnovers per minutes played, presented in the name of Harry Lancaster and donated by Daw Hairs of Kentucky. Fewest turnovers per minute. This is something all coaches love, and this young man certainly deserves it. Uh, he's had an outstanding season, Darren Fellhouse. Good job, Darren. Good job. Our fourth award, best defensive player, presented in the name of John, you Stephen F. Raritan Sr. and uh, the assistant coaches. I'm going to have one of my close friends, John Parazella, present this rather than the assistant coaches. We've got a lot of guys that really work hard on defense. But to be honest with you, if I had to pick an individual weakness, it would be individual defense. We're a pretty good team uh, on defense, we help each other out quite a bit, but as individuals, without question, the best defensive players are the guys that work from six in the morning to midnight, watching film and breaking everything down and preparing our scouting reports so they can stop it. It's our assistant coaches. First, Herb Sendek. <laughs> Billy Donovan. You gotta give him the plaque. That's the idea, you gotta give him the plaque. <laughs> Tubby Smith. And last but by no means least, my right hand man and the guy I think responsible in all the years I've been coaching, 
for the best preparation that I've ever had as a coach, and that's Ralph Willard. <laughs> Coach's favorite award, Mr. Hustle Award. And that's donated by Bluegrass Kiwanis Club, Mr. Hustle Award. Again, there's no question about this one, although it's, it's really tough to decide on a team like this because it's, it's such a hustling team each night out, and that's why we went undefeated in the SEC here at home. But you have to pick someone. It's none other than Darren Fellhouse. Martelli anytime for great breakfast biscuits, delicious deli sandwiches, or fantastic hamburgers. There's crispy fried chicken, and don't forget hot dogs every day, too, for 99 cents. Whether it's lunch on the run or a complete dinner, make it Happy Mart. And remember, now you can get a free car wash with an eight-gallon fill-up from any one of our five convenient car wash locations. Happy Mart, taking care of you. Free. Have you ever wondered what Coach Rick Pitino experiences on game day? Watch Thursday night at 8 for WKYT's exclusive, A Day with Rick Pitino. The 27 News First sports team follows Coach Pitino and his staff from sunup to sundown for the UK-Auburn game. Watch exciting pregame preparations. See how the plays are put into motion, plus action-packed sideline footage revealing the inside emotions of the coaches and the team. A Day with Rick Pitino, Thursday at 8 on WKYT. We're moving on with the awards now, and award number six is the A.B. Chandler Leadership Award, donated by radio station WBLK. The number six. Hey. Okay, the leader leadership, leadership award. And the leadership, and the leadership award presented by Governor Chandler goes to Reggie Hansen. Student Athlete of the Year, given by the K-Men's Association in memory of Sam Huey to the team's top student athlete this past year. Ralph, you should give it because of Holy Cross. Student Athlete of the Year, this is a close one because we have so many outstanding students. But he finished about one grade point higher than the rest of them. And it goes to Paintville's John Pelfrey. last night and I got halfway there and, and landed in um, I said Mount Pilot that's Mount Sterling <laughs> but I got there outstanding senior award donated by the committee of 101 in memory of Claude Sullivan and now, GTE this this was a tough call this was really tough Coaching staff wrestled with this one all night. But the outstanding senior goes to Derek Miller. <laughs> you surprised? You surprised? Most improved player, 
donated by the Lexington JCs. This one also, I think, was clear cut. I really think that Sean Woods and Richie Farmer came on and really improved this year from the point guard position. I thought that Derek Miller improved so much in his play, especially movement without the ball and in man defense. I think really most of the guys did get better as the season has gone along, but there's no doubt in my mind from the moment we hit that track and conditioning to tonight that Darren Fellhouse was the most improved player. The doctors at the University of Kentucky Heart Institute are taking good care of me. They say I'll be back playing catch with you in no time. The University of Kentucky Heart Institute, meeting your most important needs. We're ready to continue with the awards. The 10th award is the Fan. Fan of the Year, donated by the UK Athletics Association. It's tough to give out this one. Somebody asked me the other day, and the person I'd like to present this award, if he'd come out, somebody asked me the other day, why are you so happy? And then my friend Larry came down from New York. He said, I've never seen you this happy. You've always been upbeat, but never this upbeat. I said, Larry, you're not going to believe our fans here, there's nothing close to them in the world. And the second reason, I said, because we've got the most dedicated young men that ever stepped between these lines. And the person, and the person who's going to present this award is the third reason. He's the best friend and best administrator a coach could have, and he is one phenomenal person. C.M. Newton. Thank you. I go back a lot of years at, at this fine university, and I remember as a player, one of the great fans at that time was a man who was the governor of the Commonwealth, and on behalf of Coach Patino, and this basketball team, this coaching staff, university administration, it's my real, real pleasure to present the Fan of the Year Award to Governor A.B. Happy Chandler. Playmaker. You know, a lot of times, best playmakers go to point guards, and certainly we've got two outstanding ones. But this person is the guy who makes the play, who thinks pass before shot. He's the guy that would sacrifice himself to make other people better. And I think he's, and I said this over and over, I wouldn't trade him for any player in America, John Pelfrey. Yeah, 
I love a little bit. <laughs> I hope there's more here. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Deflection Award. Coach Pacino puts a lot of emphasis on deflections, and this award is donated by the Cat's Paws. Chris, we only have one. Chris, we have one. Why don't you present it so the other guy gets mad at you? <laughs> this is a tie. We add up all the deflections. It's five areas. A piece of the ball when you have your hands up. A tip from behind on the break or on the press. S for steal, B for block shot, R for recovery on a, on a loose ball. And it was, after a long season, a tie, which is hard to believe. But it goes to Mr. Deflection, John Pelfrey, and Reggie Hansen. Most Valuable Player Award, donated annually by Kentucky Central Insurance Company. Most Valuable Player. Okay, now, Most Valuable Player, look at the word, not outstanding player, valuable. And, now you people too biased, it's not him, it's Reggie Hansen. Good job. Rick, I know that uh, your, your uh, sheet shows that we've given all the awards, but there's one more. Van Florence, the president of the 101 Club. Would you come out, Van? One more award. Before we give this out, I know how in... Thank you, babe. We can step <laughs> I had another reward. Speechless. Yeah. Before we give this out and we do this, I think it'd be only fitting. Uh, this young man said to me in the locker room, Coach, can you get me into some of those all-star NBA games and one in particular? And I said, well, I'll speak to this certain scout who tells the people what all-star games they're going to. And he said, well, Coach, he said in the, one of the newspapers that I couldn't play in the NBA. And I said, Derek, there's a difference between wildcat people and other people in life. Wildcat people always say the bottle's half full, not half empty. And I think it's only time now that Derek Miller says his parting words to you people. Derek, come on up. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all the fans. It's been really great to play here for four years. Uh, my teammates, and most of all, all these guys right here. I don't think I'd be standing right here if it wasn't for these guys right here. And I want to thank my parents. Coach Patino was thrown off stride a little bit, but now it's time for that award. Okay. Thank you, Kaywood. Coach, it wouldn't be an awards banquet or presentation without presenting the Coach of the Year with something. So on behalf of your staff, the fans... Four, six, eight. Lee's famous recipe has the best tasting chicken in town. I was afraid that our guys would get emotional with the song and, and really come out a little slow. And I was thinking as the song was being played that more than anything else, the staff and my family, and me in particular, I'm now part of that song for a long time. Well, 
Congratulations on a great season so far. Win two more. And last but by no mean least, the University of, of Kentucky owes a lot to so many people throughout this state. Our fans, everywhere we go, we see headlines in the oppo opposition's newspapers. Boy, if we could ever bring the Kentucky fans to our home arena, would that be something special? We thank you from the bottom of my hearts for being the greatest fans that I've ever witnessed as a basketball coach. Thank you very much. Simply the Best was brought to you in part by Ford and your Kentucky Ford dealer, where you'll like the Ford deal you drive home. By Food Town, we're on your side. By Pepsi and your local Pepsi-Cola bottler. By Kentucky Finance, doing things the Kentucky way for over 40 years.